Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. It's heavy meta gaming. <laughs> nice. Uh, what about the first time you played Maverick? Oh, um, so I actually can tell you about the first time I played in the tournament because I will never forget that. It must have been 2000. Actually, you know what? I believe the first time I actually played in a tournament might have actually been the GP in Amsterdam because to, to do, like, I guess I could go, like, on for ages about this, but the, the way it worked with Maverick, it, it I think it primarily became a thing in Europe in the summer or, like, even spring of 2011 where everybody started playing it. I think relative to the overall power of the format, um, that was the best time for Maverick ever. And more and more and more people played it and played it. It wasn't that expensive to build, like really not all that expensive, so I always had it. And then I saw Anton Kalinski, whom a lot of European players probably know um, from Vintage and Legacy, play it at Ovino Gedon in uh, 2011, like right before the GP uh, in Amsterdam. And he was incredible with the deck. Like, I will never forget one of the plays that he made. He played against High Tide, which you'd think we don't really have a lot of, like, counterplay against those High Tide decks. But what he did is, in response to Time Sparrow, he surgically extracted Force of Will. And I was like, why would you do that? It doesn't didn't make sense to me. I was, like, a much worse player than I am now. And But he did that. And then they drew their new hands for the... Um, for the Time Sparrow, and he had like two Mindbreak Traps in hand that he happened to draw off the, the Time Sparrow, and because he had previously extracted the, the Force of Wills, it was a lot harder for the high deck to actually play around that, and then he won. And that, Very to me, cool. was the moment where I was like, dude, this deck has like so many tiny little things to, to make it work, and I'm down. I'm gonna play it. And yeah, uh, around comes GP Amsterdam 2011. I think maybe I, I played it like at a local, like one or two locals before, but I, I was like that said on playing uh, on playing high tide. But as it turns out, I switched to Maverick because high tide. Uh, it's part of the tournament report. You got pulled up here, right? It, it didn't feel good for me. Um, I I played it in the in the trials and everything leading up to it, and everybody had like you know counter balances, fluster storms, everything because everybody was gunning for a blue black reanimator, and we took a lot of splash damage. So in the end, I was like, you know what? Let's play what I know. Let's play what I, I actually rather what I love. And yeah, this is this is the list I ended up on. Apparently, I even had like three Avon Mind Sensors, dude. <laughs> yes, That's streets ahead. I I love to see it because because when you look at like the sh real shell of the deck, nothing really has changed that much. Like you still see Knight, you still see Mum, you still see Noble. Tonight you still see Avon. Othario um, wasn't there. Ah, uh, yes, that's the big card. I was trying to think, like, you can see a lot of cards in here that don't typically make it, but then you also see a lot of cards that are already already there. So it's like, where have you made the space? But of course, I guess Thalia wasn't printed. Yeah, she, she um, came out on Dark Ascension, which was released somewhat later, uh, mm. either by the end of the year or by the, the beginning of next year. There was, like, the second set in the well, when we still had blocks in the Innistrad block. Yeah, I always find it pretty interesting to actually... Uh, search spoilers for cards like Thalia and find the old MTG The Source uh, or MTG Salvation forums and see what people thought about the card on release and then have a bit of a, yeah, compare it to what it's doing now. Like, uh, I know the one for Duck Confidant is pretty funny. Uh, obviously, uh, Tamagoyf as well was a, a pretty funny one, seeing people not really take into consideration how powerful it would become down the line. Oh, that right. actually, that, that would be like a great video or a podcast episode where you just go back in time, like a decade, and, and you read out the comments or, or look at the comments of people about those cards. Like, Thalia, uh, I don't know. Do people really play all that many non-creature spells? Uh, and it's legendary. Eh, pass. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was you guys with your podcast. You made a lot of uh, sort of talk about spoilers, and then you actually went back to see what you said about uh, spoiled cards and how they actually went, which you could definitely do something yeah, about. about 100. Yes, that's right. Very, very cool. Uh, you could definitely do the same thing about like powerful cards now and what they were like when they were spoiled. Which cards were really underrated? Which cards were really overrated? One card that comes to mind is Aurelia's Fury. I played Standard during that time, and that was a card that people thought was going to be busted, and it didn't really see any play. I don't even remember what it does. <laughs> I believe it's uh, Boros and X, and you can. 
deal one damage up to X creatures. And if a creature is damaged this way, you tap it as well. It was kind of seen as like a new bonfire. I think it did something else as okay. well, but um, sadly it just didn't really see standard play. I believe that was the same gate crash. Gate crash? Yeah, I think that was in gate crash. Anyway. Well, my favorite uh, part of, of looking back at old cards was when we reached we're making our show notes for everyday channel and we were talking about which cards to talk about from my drain and then bob bob wang actually was like uh when we brought up oko he's like no let's talk about playable cards <laughs> and then we just like skipped talking about oko <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah well don't let him forget uh so he, yeah here's the list from amsterdam and then uh i found this list as well from gp Bologna. Bologna? Yeah. I, I can Bologna, never get the pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, but again, very similar. But I guess if you're Italian, it's more like Bologna. Yeah, okay. Now it sounds like a Bolognese. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, like just a really straightforward Maverick list, um, which I think like the big thing that drew me to Maverick was just the consistency. And Green Suns and Knight, of course, allow that, just being able to tutor up any creature or any land you really want for the issues in front of you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and then, yeah, the Stonefush Mystic Package, of course. And then it was very cool to see this because I didn't really expect it. Um, I remember watching this on my second monitor at work uh, because this was in the early mornings <laughs> in Australia. Um, but it was always like Thursday morning, Legacy Premier League, 8.30, create a meeting, lock it out. <laughs> um, oh, wow, wow. But to, yeah, to see this come up against uh, Javier Dominguez was really, really cool. Um, and I believe there's a really good match. Uh, I would say, like, I think it probably one of the most impressive matches that I've watched Maverick. It was you against Javier on Hogak. And I think he had a very fast uh. start. And then you were able to, like, slowly clinch it out, maybe with, like, scavenging ooze over time. And, like, just slowly, like, constrict his ability to get those final points of damage in. And then... Yeah, it actually was to... because I, I know I won I won the league, but the thing is, and I lost to him in the winner bracket finals. But then I came back through the lower bracket, and I I had to get the reset and and then win the the rematch again. And you can see, right, that's five hours and twenty. And it's funny you say this this was the early morning hours for for Australia. In the end, it was also the early morning hours for for Europe because I think we started playing at something like midnight. Yes. And then we played until like half past five or almost six in the morning. And we were both like in Europe. We were like devastated. We, we literally <laughs> played five hours of Magic. Yeah, that's crazy. Especially for like everyone involved. Because like it's obviously the players, but then also the commentary team. The people in chat don't want to leave either. So yeah. They, um, yeah, great uh, times. Exactly. I know, I know a lot of effort went into it. And I know a lot of effort would have to bring it back as well. So hopefully... When uh when things die down and time becomes more of a resource, we might see <laughs> another LPL. Yeah. But it's really good to have all of this on your YouTube channel as well for anyone who wants to go back in and watch it. Yeah, definitely. And and you can see like the the, the car is still rather the same. Um, if, if I talk a little bit like about the channel game plan. I guess most viewers are all familiar with it. But there's there's really some some core things, and one of the the, the ways to victory with the stack is or, or rather, like, I guess most people know, you make a creature, you attack, creature's life total goes to zero, that's how you win. But with Maverick, uh, it's always like you you have different kind of intermediary win conditions. And one of the most common ones is you wasteland them out. You wasteland them out really hard. And, and the core parts of that is, of course, Knight, Script Ranger, which allows you to use Knight again. But then also Ramerwork Excavator. Because the Excavator is also going to make it so that sometimes, you know, you're going to have turns where you wasteland them twice or even three times. There's like combinations where, where you can like do it three times easily. Uh, you give up a lot of your own land drops, of course, because of script range up, but it's usually worth it because you have a giant knight. So that's one of the most common ways to do it. <clears throat> and part of that is also like even mind center that helps you out a little bit with that plan because it's going to make it so much harder for the fetch lands to do something. Uh, so that's one plan. The other plan that comes up every now and then, it's not that common anymore, is to really just make a big knight and get there with Mother of Runes. So you give like the relevant protection. Once again, Script Ranger helps with that, so you can use it twice. Uh, and then you just attack them twice with a really big knight usually, and the game ends even though they might have other stuff. If you do that, uh, <laughs> something that came up to me at GP Amsterdam that I only learned then is 
don't give protection from white first, even though you kind of want to, because then you have protection from salts to flower shares, but then you can't use your mother a second time. I literally learned that the GP back then, like 11 years ago. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's, that, that's the second plan. And the third plan is really just like a random grind plan that comes up every once in a while, uh, actually quite often even, uh, where you, you just like, you trade, 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 you you get there on, on card advantage, on card quality. And the biggest part of that is the engine of Tireless Tracker and Remover Excavator. Part of that is also Knight, part of that is Fetchlands. That's just like so many things. And I, I want to say the biggest part of that, once that engine gets going, is actually Cradle. Because Cradle is going to give you so much mana that you actually get to draw a bunch of cards that actually do something. Usually like removal spells so you can stay alive for longer. And yeah, that's those are basically the three plans that I try to follow with Maverick. And everything else is just like random tools, like tactics, not strategy. Yeah, do you have any, uh, I guess, like Maverick ways that you don't think other players uh, pick up in the same way? Like, are there kind of ways you play the deck that... Um, you think are kind of unique to how you've uh, maybe piloted the deck yeah. over the, the past few years? Yeah, I think when I watch other people, the the most common thing where I'm much more aggressive on is mana denial. It's To me, this is just so much about the mana denial of the deck because in a, in a, like a fair straight-up game, especially against control decks, this deck is going to struggle. And if the deck actually, like if the, the control deck actually does play a lot of basic lands, then you are going to have a lot of trouble. And that's where the, the idea of having like a big knight and mother and a couple of activations comes in. Uh, also, big, big part of that is um, Sylvan Library, even though there's some dis-synergy with the Spirit of the Labyrinth. The, those are probably like the bi two biggest flex slots, like the two spirits. And I guess to a degree, also like at least one of the mind sensors where you could play something else. I played once upon a time in the deck in the past, was okay, never really blew me away. I like it more in like elves. And yeah, this this is where I, I see other people. Like I see people cutting Thalia, which makes sense in the context of having a different strategy. But in the context of, one of, of wanting to be as annoying as possible, like turn to Thalia just like goes such a long way. And, and uh makes it so that you can like kind of steal the initiative back like not the the game mechanic initiative but like the actual concept of initiative in a game where your opponent always has to like play back to to or react to what you do and a lot of times with maverick if you have to re react what your opponent is doing unless uh, you're playing against Dava, then you are in big trouble um especially if you fall back like maverick is not the greatest deck as catching up uh we can somewhat catch up with like planeswalkers or maybe tireless trucker if you're only down on cards but if you are down on the board against another creature deck, um, especially in the mirror, it's really hard to catch up. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's why I love Mind Sensor so much. We talked about my Bologna finish, right? And the, I want to say the biggest part of the Bologna finish was just Mind Sensor. I played against Death in Texas quite a lot, um, and even Mind Sensor was insane against Death in Texas, as you can probably imagine. Yeah, definitely. Like, even the evasion is really nice. Uh, obviously, the, the flash is fantastic. Um... But it, yeah. it's just a great way to turn off things like opposing, opposing Green Suns without actually hitting your own. Uh, same with Fetchlands, obviously same with Knight. So against a deck like Naya Depths, which is seeing a fair bit of play in leagues, uh, Avon just seems so great at turning off, you know, four Green Suns, four Reclaimer, four Knight, Fetchlands. Like, um, I've played Doomsday against... Well. That, that's another big one. Yeah, Doomsday's a, a great one. Uh, even Elves, like Elves being able to shut off... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully shut up natural order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, go, go, going back to your question, the one thing I'm doing differently is I'm, I've never been a big fan of Stoneforge. Uh, this list isn't running any. Now that Kaldra Complete has been printed, I am I actually don't hate Stoneforge. Like I, I, I like Sword sort of Fire and Ice. I like Kaldra Complete. So I could see like cutting. And I'm actually I was thinking about this last night when I finished the list. I could see cutting something like two Spirit of the Labyrinth for two Stoneforge and then adding the two equipments over something like the third Endurance and then maybe Scavenging Ooze. Those, those, that would be a Stoneforge package that I could see playing in there. Uh, the main reason I never really liked Stoneforge is because it's too clunky and um, it kind of goes against the, the whole idea that I just talked about, right, of, of keeping the initiative and presenting something because when you, when you do like your whole Stoneforge, pass, untap, pass, uh, end of trying to put in better skull, untap, attack with a 4 4 lifeling. It's just like so sluggish and slow, and it's not where I want to be. 
But Kaldra Complete, that card is sexy. That card kind of does what Maverick wants to do. And you, yeah, and sort of Fire and Ice is just like an all-star. Like, that, that's just such an amazing card. That's like an, I want to say like a Sil uh, Sylvan Library on steroids once it gets going, especially on a flyer. So that card, that's probably the card I miss the most from the current list that I'm playing here. But this is what we're going with tonight. Yeah, I, I couldn't say it better. Uh, for the time that I played with Kaldra uh, in like D&T or some Stoneforge Mystic builds, it's crazy how much pressure it puts on your opponent especially for opponents that want to go wide early um it can cause real havoc especially if you're like turn one mum turn two stoneforge it can be really hard for your opponents to deal with eldra in a, an e efficient way yeah it's just such an annoying card to play against like this i think the only thing you can re reasonably do is like trying to solve supplies as it uh but not every deck has really has access to that so yeah it's amazing yeah and I, I, I definitely agree with some of your uh, thoughts around Once Upon a Time as well. Um, it's, it's hard to balance like a good Green Suns package, a good lands package, have those utility lands, have those utility creatures, but then make sure you don't have too much uh, fluff, I guess. Kind of like blue decks running, you know, say like the full suite of all uh, cantrips and not having enough action. Um, and then of course... Green Suns and Knight are such good tutors because you get to find specifically what you're after. Whereas Once doesn't always find what you need. Like if you keep a hand with no green source, but you have a Once Upon a Time, you're like, I'll find it. And you don't. It is a, it is a terrible feeling. <laughs> yeah, that, that one I don't mind so much. I mean, it, it's a super awkward feeling, right? You feel like, oh, what could I have done? Um, and I like Once Upon a Time mainly for finding a, a piece of acceleration on the first turn. That's just like the only reason I, I'd really want it. Once you get to the mid game, um, it goes back to to that. That's just like that's such a big thing of trying to keep the initiative in the game. Uh, and that's uh, where Once Upon a Time is like completely contrary to that. It's it's like a green sun zenith that doesn't dig as deep and but as deep the zenith digs deep, uh, digs for the entire library, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's it's just like a lot more clunky. And the clunkier the card is, the, the harder it is for me to actually justify the Maverick when, when you have such a strong tempo approach to it. So I, I, when I started the list, it was still like my previous list, with, which had like two or three once upon a times. And yeah, but this is, this is where we are now, and this is what I want to do. I'm nice. not a big fan that we have three endurances in the main. Like that card to me is like just the opposite of Maverick. It's just like a stupid big cow, as Anorak sometimes calls, calls it. It's like three for a reach, and then it gives you some more protection against uh, graveyard strategies and stuff. And of course, it's great against Starva. It's just such a blunt card. Uh, I, I love it. I love that it exists in the format. I love that we have like extra play against against Doomsday and stuff. It's just not very elegant, uh, in at least compared to all the other Maverick tools. This is more like everybody's like fencing, and somebody comes in with like just a, like a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like a bazooka. <laughs> yeah, bazooka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny that you say cow, because I've heard cow a few times, but surely it's a deer. It looks like a deer. I don't know, man. I've never been to Australia. Our deers look, like, pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, okay, I can see where the deer thing is coming Because it, okay. it has, like, the antlers as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Anyway. I, I could see, like, South, uh, Southern Elephant is another comparison. Southern Elephant is, like, a three mana, three four, uh, nothing. Mm -hmm. uh and then sideboard a lot of combo hate uh we see a lot of combo uh decks in in leagues and i think it's very important for a deck like maverick to have those sort of turn zero or turn one speed bumps to allow us to get to a turn two thalia or maybe a turn three mind sensor um deafening silence yeah, definitely i think like up there with like elvish reclaimer for green decks deafening silence for white decks has just been like such a great printing for a lot of these decks to still like stay in the game against combo in the year 2022 yeah i love that card a lot uh and like you mentioned right this deck is definitely geared towards a league meta game because leagues are a lot more combo heavy at least that's what it has felt like over the last years mm. or months rather uh deafening silence is kind of cool I've, it has so many applications you can you can sometimes even like bring it in against some kind of show and tell decks uh, if you're force of rigor, because then you might and you put something in the, uh, that gives you a triggered ability, so they can't cast a creature right away, and then you can like force of rigor in response, and they can't. They have like no counterplay. They they can't force it because they already played the spell. I used it like we talked about the last time I played this on paper, right? 
I played against Dredge, which is a deck that doesn't really exist in Legacy right now. I played against Dredge and I went turn one Deafening Silence and I will never forget, like my, my Dredge opponent untapped and then he looked at his cards and then he just looks at me and he's like, Dude, this is just like the worst ever. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> lines are diamond, go. <laughs> just like next turn crack while Faithless Looting, go. It's just, it's great. It's absolutely great. The, the one thing that I'm like, so and so on is the maze. Right, that's that's a little bit of a blast from the past. That hasn't really been a Maverick card in a long time. Mm. It's it's there, so you can dig it up with Knight. Uh, you could use it, uh, of course. Like the big thing is is um, Merit Lage, which you you can even like get, get past the Saturi step and stuff. So I mean, eventually they're gonna have counterplay against it, of course. Uh, but you can also like bring it in against Diaba as a pseudo removal spell for for the biggest creature kinda. They can wasteland it, but you also have Rumberwork Excavator to to maybe get it back. I wanna play it. It's by the way, it's another thing to try and stop. I guess um, Kaldra complete if that ever shows up. I don't really expect it to. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is probably the biggest. I'm not sure slot in, in the entire thing. Uh, I was actually like still thinking about maybe adding something else but yeah let's let's try it for now let's let's do some cool tricks with knight right uh, every merit player is aware of that like the yeah the end of combat untap my knight use it again sweet <laughs> yeah i uh i've definitely had a few times where i've reinstalled mtgo and forgot to add in the like end of combat damage stop and i've like gone oh we're gonna attack with knight and then untap it and then just goes to like second main you're like oh no <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, Maze is a, against Kaldra is a, is a pretty fantastic card to have because, of course, Mum can protect from things like Swords to Plowshares. Um, and just to buy that time as well because, like, Kaldra is a four-turn clock. So being able to kind of, like, uh, time walk your opponent off five damage is, is pretty uh, pretty crucial. Yeah, yeah, loving it. I'm seeing a, ch a question. Could you not go um, the depth l look with Tower of the Magistrate and Chesm Maze sideboard plan? I'm not, I'm not following. Is, is, Robert, are you talking about like playing the depth package in, in this list? Like, I mean, there have been Maverick decks that played that, but this is just like contrary to, to my whole approach to deck where I, I don't want to combo. I just want to mana. I want to, fuck, dude, I, I don't want them to have mana, okay? Just, like, <laughs> eat the rich, take away all the mana. I think what Rob's saying is uh, with depth decks, you'll see Tower of the Magistrate or Glacial Chasm in the sideboard. Um, and maybe like, are there any cards that Maze really hurts that? Say tower doesn't say tower is another great way to deal with uh Keldra. but I guess maze mm -hmm. hitting things like Marit Lage, um, the twenty twenty. If they have if they have tower of magistrate, what does it actually does it does it give, protect, uh, give protection from artifacts or from colorless? Uh, artifacts from artifacts, right? That's why you can disequip an equipment if you use it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Correct. Um, so yeah, maze also gets through that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I guess like maze having. Being able to maze your own creatures as well is quite nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get into a league and see how this goes. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to, dude. I want to get as many turn one noble hierarchs as we can. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, do you have um? Do you have any thoughts with Maverick? Like, do you think if someone coming back to Maverick uh, should kind of go out on their own route and sort of start with green white and then see what they want to splash from there or do you think there's like is it like a color that you always go to or do you like just sticking with green white but i think you you gotta know why you're doing something or if you copy a list you gotta understand why that person is playing that list and i think the the, the part that we talked about earlier right the the three plans that i have with maverick which is like just like mother plus big knight or wasteland them out or grind them out with a tireless tracker be aware that the list is built for that and play accordingly. So that, that's also, by the way, why, for example, if I, I, you would probably never catch me playing Punishing Fire and Maverick. It's just like three mana to remove a creature. It's just like, blah, blah. <laughs> it's, it's the complete opposite. I, I hate being clunky. And I remember when that started becoming a thing in 2012, when people were like, hey, what if we cut, if we cut uh, Thalia and then we play Punishing Fire just because it's so much better in the mirror and it puts pressure on chase and yada 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 you know what also puts pressure on chase playing thalia because then chase is like a five mana creature and i know punishing fire is better than thalia against chase in the long run but this is this is not what i want so i i would say pick any list you want but understand what it's geared towards too and if, if you play this list be aware that this is just like i will 
gladly take a bunch of damage if I can take my opponent off um, of some colored mana and and make it really hard for them to to play my game. One thing that in the past, when you did an approach like this, is you used to have a little more removal spells. Like sometimes people even played pa uh, Path and Flames, yeah, Path to Exile. So you could justify taking some more damage while taking them off mana, and and then you you would recover. We don't have any as many removal spells anymore, so now we are more reliant on something like like endurance and stuff, uh, or maybe even maze postboard. So let's see how that works. But overall, I I would say pick something that looks cool, and then understand it, and then play it. And the the only real way to get good in legacy, and that's just like something people, not people, but some people don't want to face is you have to play a fucking ass lot of is, is that what, what i can say on the stream we were australian right of of matches like you have You've to already play an insane it. amount of matches let's fucking yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> yeah here here i think uh like just jamming games is the best thing you can do yeah by far by by far far um there's I, I sometimes have people and they're like, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? It's in, in the long run, it's it's really just if you have to pick up the card and read it, or if you have to think about an interaction, that's like not, not your fault. Uh, but it's just you have to get to a level where you you. I mean, that's not even like for legacy, but uh, for for Maverick, but for legacy or Magic in general, you you just like have to internalize basically anything that could happen on the board, so you can think about the future. So you have to like fully understand what's on the board right now, uh, because if you have if you have to still like devote a lot of thoughts to interactions on the board then you you're losing a lot of time that you could like otherwise spend on thinking about the future that's pretty deep i guess <laughs> yeah no, that's uh it's like almost like a life lesson <laughs> look man it's, it's sunday night here so you can build the future. <laughs> <laughs> no i i really like that and uh yeah i think one thing for for maverick players is definitely if you're playing in a paper and you have a local meta game definitely have a look at your local metagame and see what works and what doesn't because copying a list online might not suit what you're playing against in paper. Um, because, yeah, it's it's a deck that has, like, a high level of creativity. You can kind of put in those slots for Green Suns or Knight, whatever you want. Like, if you got, you know, five eight-cast players in your local metagame, play Town Magistrate in the main deck. Ooh. Oh, dude, we have, we have acceleration in the first one. This is insane. We do. I'm going to quickly <laughs> change to gameplay. This is a pretty nice hand. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Loving yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely so, going to be keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we're going to go like Savannah, Birds, and then we'll see what we want to do in the second turn, I guess. Yeah, so many options. Uh, the ability to play both of these around days is quite nice if the bird sticks. Right. You, you don't. Oh, MTG but doesn't tell us what the opponent is playing. Damn, didn't sign up for that. Uh, oh, we have card animations and summoning sickness enabled, dude. Oh no, <laughs> we're we gonna just, like, change talk this. About getting your life under control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, elves. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, that's gonna be a, a bit of a harder one, I guess. Well, I guess we have spirit, which helps, but that's not. If, if it's like the new school version of, of like, quote unquote, elves, that's not nearly as good anymore. Um, mm. Just because there's no glimpse and almost no visionaries. It's just like, we need to find Avon. Dude, if we had Avon Mind Sense already, that would be amazing. But what do you want to do here? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, like, I think past next turn, there's probably no point in playing the library. So maybe this turn is the library if the spirit isn't online. Um, Thali is obviously nice at taxing something like a Green Suns, but yeah, the Shepherd Forest doesn't give away too much about what build they're on. Yeah, the thing is, I would completely rule out Green Suns here um, because they would probably have played it on the first turn after we we went Savannah and Birds of Paradise. There's just like no reason to play the Shepherd over mm. the over acceleration with Green Suns unless like some super corner case scenarios. Uh, I I agree. I would also just like run out library and play the, the fetch and not crack it yet. Because, mm. yeah, worst comes to worst, we can play the tracker potentially next turn and then also have the fetch around for it. Yeah, I, I expect we're probably going to pay eight life next turn. Um, but let's see how that works. I, I just like if they play some kind of acceleration or mana, we just like want to take that away. Okay, that's already a little bit of weakness. Ooh. Oh, what the fuck? 
Okay. <laughs> they're going to be on the uh, the Lord version, so. Or maybe they randomly happen just like to have this one in hand, but this is interesting. I guess we take two here. Yeah, sure. Come on, give us Wasteland and, and Salt to Plowshares. Mom's an okay go. start. Uh huh. Uh huh. So. What do you want to do? Uh, first thought is paying uh, an, an additional four for the mum and the noble, uh, and then being able to shuffle in end step. But yeah, the question I, is like, I, 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 yeah, what are we what are we digging for? Well, basically anything that that allows us to like control whatever they are doing, like like removal spells or like wastelands and stuff. Uh, but in in the long run, probably mine sensor. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, unless they have Cradle, they can't really Natural Order next turn, but they could have Cradle, of course, uh, and that would also be the reason why they play Busichu here, because they don't want to expose to Cradle. Uh, so I'm, I'm almost like a little bit scared of, of Natural Order. On the other hand, like that wouldn't be lethal, but well, if we pay 8 life, then it probably would be. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I Thalia be... does keep uh, Natural Order off the table, and also just being a 2-1 first striker isn't too bad on this board. Yeah, what if we what if we Green Suns for Script Ranger and then we untap and then we have two mana into Thalia? Nice. Uh, I don't hate that. Yeah. And then we put back Noble Hierarch, yeah. And mm, I'm not sure if we keep Mother. I'm not. I kind of want to pay like a lot of mana, a lot of life, but the Mother doesn't really do all that. Like the Mother does more for us if he had Knight, then it would be like. Uh, <laughs> sorry, big turn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you are gonna win this game now on this turn. <laughs> uh, but we don't really have a big knight to eventually win. Like this could very well be a game where eventually we will need mother because we can't get past all the shit that they have. But mm. maybe we, we put her back though because we might still be able to get something better um, with our life on the next turn because our life total is under some bit of pressure, right? Yeah, exactly. Um... And you could say that potentially down the line, Mum saves that full life, but um, I think this puts us in a pretty nice position as well. Yeah, we gotta find something next turn, but we, I mean, we're gonna have at least like a bunch of mana next turn, so we're gonna have like at least five mana. Let's see how that works out. I just want Mind Sensor, man. Like, mind Sensor is so good. Yeah, there's so the cradle. Of mind. Ah, see, Jeez. knew it. <laughs> Oh, no, they still have... Okay, never mind. They can still just get us. Like, this is just like a horrible matchup overall. Oh, they paid to draw. Okay, cool. Good. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you can do that. Another one of those. <laughs> yeah, we, we gotta get rid of the cradle. Dude, we were just like so dead to the I mean if they have natural art, okay, this is Senate now, visionary, okay, cool. So, so I yeah. guess what we want here is now wasteland and maybe sorts to plowshares for the Lord. Mm. Something like that. But even then they might be able to just overrun us by having one, two, three, four, five, six mana untap. Yeah, we are still like in a near dead situation even if we find wasteland plus remover spell Oof. yeah this is this is just like this is what you do when you're unfair this is this is what maverick has never been good against this kind of like creature plan but let's see yeah there's probably a consideration for spirit especially if we already drew a card off the library for this sort of turn but it, it's definitely a, a tough decision especially to have the hindsight yeah, the current I'm going off this way. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard, right? If we if we traditionally we would have just slammed the spirit, but now that these these mid range versions or these, these Nick Fit Maverick versions of elves are so much more popular and they don't rely anywhere near as much on drawing cards, uh, you you wouldn't play spirit. But yeah, I mean, like you said, hindsight twenty twenty. <laughs> So it's, there's a good chance that we just run out this. Actually, we're, we're just like dead on board. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I would I would imagine in the seven for the cards they drew, they probably have a backup cradle, or at least a way to uh, find it after well, drawing some extra we, cards. We have to but... assume they don't, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what we what we need is like three removal spells. We need to get rid of the the symbiote, uh, but even then that doesn't do it because they can just like keep proactive. Like we have to like have a removal spell for the symbiote and hope they don't bounce one of their shepherds and response but we also like don't have enough mana to cast all our removal spells because of thalia uh, mm. yeah we, we're just like we're reaching for stuff that doesn't exist here i'm not sure why the opponent is, is waiting here what are your thoughts on uh this card have you played around which with a, a build with this too much yeah yeah i did i didn't really like it all that much uh there's not too many control decks in the format right now like heavy control decks where this could shine um, and the, the Lord effect is, isn't nearly as good if this is like a 2-2. That's just like the big problem. Like, imagine if you had something like a Plague Engineer here. It's like, oh, they have a Lord on the board, and still the entire board collapses as soon as we find a Plague Engineer. Like, what, what kind of Lord is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, lots of shit, nothing to really do. Um, I guess you can Wasteland the Cradle and hope they mess up. Like, maybe play another creature. Probably, um, probably the Spirit... But yeah. now we are kind of locked into our next draws. We know what's coming up here, uh, and it's nothing good for us. But let's just, like, run out some creatures. Yeah, your opponent, you got this. I guess we could like try to jump block with the spirit, which lets us see one card deeper in the library. But that's just like nothing. It, it, the, the upside is now we know what, what we are up against. It's just like a very dedicated traditional F stack, and that that's gonna make our two spirits a lot better in the second mm. and third game because now we we're, we're actually aware of their value. Yeah, one uh one card I always Same. kind of go back and forth on in the matchup is Mindbreak Trap because I find a lot of the times against Maverick in games two and three. The elves player will just play kind of one or two spells and just ramp into natural order for progenitus, and there isn't really a chance to trap them. But would you say that maybe this build is a little bit different? No, I'm I'm not a big fan of it at all. Like I really, really oh. don't like it. Unless you have some giga dead cards in the main deck, mm. uh, like some some really really bad cards in the main deck, and there are, there are none that really come to mind right now. Yeah, this might just be a hoof. Yeah, it looks like it. Poof, poof it real good. <laughs> I guess I just realized they have to pay for Senate or something. Uh, for for Thalia, if this is a Senate. I don't know, let's figure this out. Do you think uh, Elves is a good deck to uh, Goldfish with when you pick it up? Mm, I guess. Like, you're, you're not under pressure. You're not under, like, strategic pressure, and you're not under, like, like any kind of life total pressure or something. Mm. So it's it, it's it's kind of weird, because you usually you have to balance, like, your mana development with, like, the, the card advantage and, and, like, the threatening position that you're trying to build. And it, it's really hard to do that out of context. I guess you could do that. Like, you could draw a card. Uh, you could draw a hand and just be like, okay, I, I want to practice killing my opponent on the third turn, because that's usually like the fundamental turn for, or, or I mean the fundamental turn already happens on turn two with elves usually, but the turn three is usually where, where you kill them. And you could just like keep drawing cards and trying to to get your sequencing correctly so you can present lethal on the third turn if your deck allows for it. I think that's kind of like a cool thing to do. Just don't get frustrated when it doesn't happen because you, your hand might just dictate a completely different path, which is like, you know, visionary, visionary, visionary all the time. So it's it's probably one of the better decks to Goldfish, uh, but, you know, just get out there, play those matches. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> play those matches and, and develop your Giga awareness of everything that's possible on the board and, and then try to win that way. Okay, they got rid of our spirit instead of killing us, I guess. That's a win. <laughs> Not really, though. <laughs> Look, there's a chance. There's a chance, Julian. Do you yeah, have a... They, they uh, can a... ultimate the Shepard now and attack for one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite build of uh elves at the moment? Uh not so much. Like I I'm not too happy about either of the directions that the deck uh is in right now. The the traditional version uh, the legacy is so powerful right now. Uh I'm I'm 
it's the only deck that I actually own on Magic Online right now. Uh, but I, of course, I use Card Hunter to basically play anything else. So I'm still like super dedicated to, to it in that way. But it's I don't know. It's it doesn't feel as powerful as I want it to be right now. But yeah, that's that's that. And the other one, that's just like a completely different deck at that point. It, it still shares the name because it evolved from it. It's it's further away from Elves than Death and Texas, uh, than Maverick is from Death and Texas, which is like the deck Maverick evolved out of. Okay, mm. um, well, another bunch of nothing. Is there anything we can send it for that does something here? I'm not really aware of, of anything we have. Like, Yeah, it's mainly Green Suns for Ramanap get back Wasteland straight away. I guess um, Grist kills a creature, but that's not great. I guess Grist, mm. uh, like a Green Suns also just shuffles, which is quite nice, because they're not really you know, the endurance in Mum at this point isn't too relevant. Yeah, yeah, we... So why did they actually not kill us last turn? I, I guess we don't really need to figure that out. Is there, is there any... Like, we could get Knight, and Knight eventually gets Cradle if we don't die here. Hmm. Yeah. Also makes Tracker, obviously, a lot better. Yeah. Let's, let's try that. We have to pay one more, yeah. The life and times of a green white player in 2022. <laughs> yeah, Robert, I kind of agree with you. Like, um, if I if I was to build elves right now to to tune it for a tournament, like actual elves, it would probably like be a glimpse version without fiend, artisan, but with reclaimer because that's just like a really good card. Yeah, elvish claim is huge. Fun fact, and I actually didn't pick up on this when it was first spoiled, is that with uh. Allosaurus's Allosaurus Shepherd's ultimate, if you will, uh, makes it a five-five that then gets plus <laughs> two plus two, so it's a, a seven-eight. <laughs> yeah, that that's something that comes into. Sometimes you get somebody that way because they don't see it. Um, yeah, and they don't block it's, accordingly. It's a nice extra thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> And then people type on chat, oh, I thought layers worked differently. No, we didn't. We just, like, missed it. <laughs> 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 okay, so what's the idea? Like, assuming we get another turn, which is highly unlikely, let's already think about that. Um, we, You have a stop on the upkeep, right? So maybe we are already... Oh, no, we shuffled. We shuffled the seven, so we don't need a stop on the upkeep. We can just, like, see what the library brings. Yeah, which is quite and, nice. Yeah. And then from here basically getting something like a mother and then somehow surviving another turn which doesn't even make sense uh, but then the knight won't get big enough so basically if you could get like a mother and a knight into play on the next turn and they don't play a bachelor ranger face down then we could win on the turn after but that's that requires them to not kill us this turn and to not kill us next turn which is a big ask but we already got <laughs> much deeper into this game than i ever thought we would yeah this is a, a lot of drawing Is that right? Yeah, this can is... deck them? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Like, what is is Progenitus just an out to being decked? Uh, well, I, I guess if there's I multiple the... triggers on the stack to draw, no, because it's not a forced. I guess glimpsed is is glimpse forced. But it, glimpse is forced, yeah. But Progenitus is not in the deck in the first game usually. Oh, uh, we saw it before because they discarded it. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I assume as well that they can just uh, Green Suns for zero to put it back in the deck and always have that. But looks yeah, like... Yeah, that, that be... like, no competent Elves player has ever been killed by that on Glimpse. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a game, uh, a pretty good game, an SCG uh, legacy match with Sam Black, who was in that stage where he had to start uh, Green Sunning because of him getting decked. And I believe he yeah, like swung for time. lethal, but it was like one short. I'll have to find it. This is a very sweet game. <laughs> cool. So what do we like here? We probably want the teak, and then we almost have nothing in this in this matchup. Uh, yeah. Oof sounds like a good thing to take out. Uh, what else are we switch. looking at? Yeah. Uh this might be a case of are there any cards that are just worse than Mindbreak Trap? Well, like the cards 
potentially, right, are Endurances, Scavenging News, and Outland Liberator. I think Scavenging News is still okay just because it gains life. Yeah. Uh, Endurances can, like, sometimes ambush their shit, uh, but it's not it's not amazing. And Outland Liberator, you know, sometimes maybe they, they get something, but probably not. But it's still, like, a green creature. Uh, so, so it's more like, do you see anything in the sideboard that, that interests you? Like, if, if you want to talk me into, like, a one-off Mindbreak Trap, maybe. But... It's it's so sad that we don't have either one canonists. That card is just like nuts against the elves. I love it so much. It's yeah. I, I'm it's, on record saying that either one canonists submerge and flash storm are the three best cyber cards in Legacy. That was like ten years ago. It it still somewhat holds true. Yeah, you could definitely say that. Uh, it's always tough because I find that like it's hard. It's it's always been hard for me to play either one canonist number one over deafening silence number three or four, just because it comes down on turn one and. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's just like so much worse against eight cast, of course. That's the big thing. Yeah. Um, so actually, let, let's approach it this way: take out these five cards that we have over there. Just t take them out, and uh, and now we look at the sideboard, and we have to add five cards to the deck. So what are we adding? We are probably adding scavenging goose, I would think. Yeah, I think goose is nice, even if they are on a reclaim reclaimer build, just being able to yeah. uh, control that in some bit. Um, then what? So one more minute. Hmm. There's a, like, I guess Thalia is not great, but it has first strike. Um, yeah. We could actually take, take out like one Thalia. Actually, no, let's not take out Thalia. Let's make it hard for them to cast natural order. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's tough. For me, it would be these four, but multiple traps in my opener and not what I want. I really want to yeah, have a hand, has... hand. You you could you you have a point, right? Because endurance is going to do so little for us. Mm. Like maybe I I kind of want to get them with like the random endurance to to ambush something. But on the other hand, they don't remove our creature at all. Uh, you know what? Let's run with this. Let, let's just like give it a try. I'm probably missing something, but let's do it. Have you clicked? The time is running down. Okay, cool. There we go. <laughs> okay. This is actually a pretty fine hand, I think. This is good. We can we can like really hurt the mana development with um salt supply. I would definitely go like turn one canonis uh canopy. So we can salt the plowshares on that turn, and then on our turn yeah. if they have had to lead on a non-basic, we can waste on them. Otherwise nice. we, we can like spirit, yeah, like that. It's a yeah, little bit reliant on them actually having a bunch of non-basics, otherwise this hand is like eh. Let's see mm. how it works. And it's gone to five cards. It's also quite nice to have this, the Wastelands with the Spirit, which allows us to attack into Fetchlands, which could potentially be a Dried Arbor that, that trades with the Spirit. That's true. That's true. Let's see. <laughs> you know, in, in situations like this, where the opponent um, presents white mana, I like keep seven, presents white mana on the first turn and passes. When I'm elves, I try to run out my weakest elf. Unless there's like a big incentive to not do that. I, I like try to run out something like a like a heritage druid or something, but not someone that actually like produces like mana on the second turn mm. by itself. So I hope they do like oh, this is great. Oh, we can even like wasteland that shit. Yeah, see this is where I assume we we save the sword and untap and just wasteland the dried hour, or would yeah. you play out the spirit yeah. and allow them to no, actually no. build their board? Yeah, definitely wastelanding this one. Like the only downside is if they have like a natural visionary next turn, but I mean that's that's just like how it works. Okay, now we're drawing a little bit too many lands. So what what we hope here right now, right, is that they just like go for I don't know. Something that doesn't do anything. Mm. <laughs> They're down to four cards. That's a word. Oh, see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Pass the turn. Come on, do it. Okay. Oh, no, never mind. This is visionary, right? Must be visionary. Or senate. Leave. Oh, this okay. shit. Yeah, I guess. I guess <laughs> we. I'm not even sure. Like, it doesn't do all that much, right? We have spirit. Yeah, my only thought is that it turns off cradle if we are uh, swords here. Uh, that's true. Hmm. I don't know, man. Like, mm. we, Cradle is eventually going to be turned on anyway. 
Oh, so, so I guess the idea is we sort here and then we wasteland. I could see that. I don't hate that. It is tough because, like, we only have so many swords in the deck that everyone has to I mean, to the count. other option would be to just wasteland and pass because they are not going to draw an extra card. Like, it's quite... It's not super unlikely, but it's also like that. Mm. Let's see what we draw. That's very true. And it's not like we're drawing into something like Plague Engineer where we have to get rid of the... Uh, ability mm. to yeah Let, let's waste them here so once again if they have visionary we get kind of pun not punished i mean it does what it is ah see that's cradle get wrecked cradle this is probably <laughs> like i don't know curtain oh Makes no sense. you can't send a first oh opponent you got us oh second trial up okay never mind yeah <laughs> for a second i was like they messed up <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm in the Maverick mindset right now. Okay, and now we might just die to National Order. But yeah, that's, that's the hard part. Uh, at least we have it's... Spirit into Green Sun's Fatigue. Yeah, let's do that. They have one card left. The only other option I was thinking about was like accelerating with Senate here. So next turn we can go excavate our wasteland next turn. But that's gigantically like that's super oh, yeah. super risky hmm. okay i don't mind seeing the ones here yeah see what they find another symbiote oh that's the weakest card they could find here that's just like yeah they don't even play it they just like go for another ones see. and they found busicho oh busicho gets rid of spirit. Uh, spirit i guess so we have perfect information right they have busicho and symbiote in hand uh yeah symbiote yeah yeah why would Man, I want to waste land. Oh, dude, too many lands. <laughs> Did you not pay your, your whitelist subscription? <laughs> LG, LG. Uh, so just oh. to confirm, they can't untap anything here. So I can't attack can't with three. can't anything. Unless they have like a zero mana, elf, flash, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and I guess we just, yeah, get Mr. Mr. Teak. Not a yeah, big fan of Teak anymore, honestly, but it is... It is okay again, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, it's become more of a speed bump than kind of the uh. Oh wow! Okay. Lol. Easy game, easy life. Sure. I I, I yeah, do right. love seeing opponents who concede, and then you see them like draw card, draw card, draw card, because <laughs> that's like <laughs> when like, the player. If only had like <sighs> three time walks. <laughs> All right. So help me out. Who actually is Cass Urban? Uh Cass Urban was just. Uh, you know, twelve-year-old Dukes who thought of a cool name that used the word urban, and I was like, "Oh, Kaz." So I use Kaz Urban. <laughs> Funnily enough, Kai is usually my like just online name. Like in Skyrim, my guy will just be called Kai, and then of course, Kai joined. I joined Magic and met Kai, and then Kai joined Eternal uh, Everyday Eternal, and I only just realized <laughs> that for so long I've been calling myself Kai online, and I've met a guy called Kai. My my first nickname was actually the pain the underscore pain, and I had a bunch of uh, a box of floppy disks, and you you had a label on the front that you could write something on floppy top. Floppy disks, and I wrote pain box on it, <laughs> and I thought that's the coolest thing. Like my nickname is the pain, and I have a box of floppy disks that says pain box. I don't even know like if, if pain box is like a thing. That's probably like. I don't know, BDSM something. I don't know. But yeah, that's the pain. Doesn't doesn't really sound that cool anymore. <laughs> Anything you want to change? Not really, right? We just wrecked the opponent clearly after they mulligan to five. <laughs> exactly. Um, my only thought is endurance. One endurance. Yeah, that's that's the only thing for me as well. Um, but on the draw, like on the the thing is on the draw, we're gonna have a lot fewer opportunities where we actually get to ambush something. Mm. Uh, like, I don't hate, like, I, if anything, I like Mind Break Trap more on the draw. Yeah, okay. Especially if they go for Progenitus, you know, there might be some scenarios where they, they go, like, Creature, Creature, Cradle, Natural Order, and maybe we get them that way. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of Net Mind Break Trap in the matchup at all. Um, yeah. It also gets turned off by Guide Dog Teak, but I guess that's just, like, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, with that. There was a famous Doomsday puzzle um, many, like 10 years ago or something that was really, really famous and people needed to find the the out and part of the, the correct line was that you don't actually need to deal with Mind Backtrap 
because Mind Break Trap is actually turned off by the opponent's Gadok Teak. And people were like, oh, I have to remove Gadok Teak and then I have to take care of Mind Break Trap. It's like, no, you, you go for a completely different line. You don't use Tendrils of Agony, which like was a thing back then. You you just like kill with, I don't remember, like Grape Shot or what have you. And you completely ignore Mind Break Trap. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> to me, that was amazing. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. I do love seeing... Uh... I know there's someone who puts out some really nice ones, like where they've actually done a bit of like graphic design to show the board. Um, it could have been, is it PVDD? PVDH? Uh, the, the, the Dutch guy? Yes. I think he used to do them. He might, he might do that. I, I did that for, in a couple of articles I wrote in 2017, 18. Um, Oh, nice. Also, you can find those on students. One of them is about Eternal Weekend, and the other one is about MKM Frankfurt. If you, if you want to have a look at those, those up. Hey, opponent, Mulligan to six. Uh, what, what, what is this hand doing? Uh, this hand is playing a turn one uh, Birds of Paradise, and then most likely turn two Gadok T, turn three Wasteland. Mm -hmm. um, if we really wanted to, it could also just be turn one Bird, turn two Wasteland. It's tough because the Wasteland is bad for Mind Break Trap because it's less mana for them to actually cast spells into. And of course, if we get <laughs> Teague on the foot on the board, then Trap also isn't doing a whole lot. But we do have a little bit of play to this where if Teague's on the board and we want to cast the Trap, we can Caracas Teague to our hand and then cast Trap. But I don't think that's going to come up. But I, like this, this hand has the mana to do everything we want to do and it has a spell land, which is quite nice. No, but it doesn't have even mind sensor. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, sadly. So, like, I'm... Almost imagining something like where we turn one wasteland. Uh, if they don't play out one mana, like a mana producing creature, like if they go turn one wild symbiote of, of something that we can waste, they almost just like want to straight away wasteland them and try to cheese them out because I think our odds of winning with this hand is like a super low. Uh, mm. I almost would mulligan this, but we, we're on the draw. We're going to draw another card. It could be like a salt to plowshares or even mine sensor, and the hand is functional. That's why I would keep it. But nice. It, I think this is very much on the edge of, of being a mulligan. Uh, but on the other hand, like the matchup is horrible in the first place. So Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm definitely on the same page. I think that Elves is a matchup just like Delver these days where you kind of have to, not have to, but you kind of want a mulligan to a hand with at least one removal spell. Okay, that's good for us, right? That card doesn't do anything. That card like becomes relevant in turn three. Hmm. Okay. You know, we need strip mine in the format. There's just like no way around it. We pretty much required strip mine here. Just like strip mine them into hell. We go one. Oh, go go, virtual rangers. Ah, but, uh, okay, now you know what we're gonna draw here. We're gonna draw even mine sense, and we're gonna wreck them. I'd love to hear it. Has there another ever been like I a... Once uh... made was... Yeah? Sorry, you go. You go. I thought another puzzle I once made was... Um, the solution was to intuition for three Nakramobas because that puts two creatures into play. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. I had to try real hard to come up with like a, a real in-game scenario where something like this would happen. And it's... Yeah. It's not really happening. Uh, dude, well, what's the idea here? Mm. So I, I think mm. they're holding up Dried Arbor here. So I'm not sure if I want to play the Wasteland as my land or Caracas. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the Dried Arbor makes sense, right? Because that taps for two mana with the Wildwood Symbiote. Mm. Uh, uh -huh. It's just like sad that we don't, don't get to Senate. But... Because if we oh. die to Natural Order, we feel really stupid here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... But if they get dried up and they have uh, limbs, that's super annoying. I mean, we get to cash in the mind break trap, but at what cost? <laughs> I probably think I get Teak here, honestly. Yeah, off the crackers. Like we can't. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So basically, the idea is if we if we play Caracas now, and then next time we want to play Wasteland, maybe. But then we draw something. Another. So basically, the idea is: is there another land that we could draw next turn that we really want to play? Because we might already really want to play the wasteland, and then we're in a position where we want to play two lands we really want. And since right now there's neither land we really want, it's more like maybe wasteland. But I'm. Hmm. 
Honestly, like, maybe you want to play Wasteland because if they still fetch Rydabo here and attempt something foolish, and then they play another non-basic land, then next turn we can Wasteland them twice, whereas otherwise we could only do it once. There we go. Love it. And at least there is a world where we still have that Kraken Slime with Mindbreak Trap. But thankfully, with only one mana up, they can't get rid of Teague here. I would assume some sort of Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy, maybe. I guess they can't Green Suns for Grist, which is nice. Well, if they, if they get Y, what's it? Oh, yeah, you're right, because Green Suns turned off, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Ledraidabor. So, three mana, do your worst. Oh, wait, no. Oh, I, I was almost hoping, oh, they're passing? No, but you have a, a draw step. Stop. Dude. <laughs> Has yeah. that ever done something for you? <laughs> uh, I mean, it does sometimes. Yeah, I usually do it with uh, Urza Saga decks with Knight of the Reliquary or Crop Rotation, because then you get the extra activated, you get the extra trigger, so you can make oh, it so do smart. the same turn. I actually messed that up on my stream the other day. <laughs> so look at me, <laughs> like giving you shit for the draw step. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess in that case, it would be more like your own draw step, but yeah. <laughs> that's true, yeah, that's very true. Uh -oh. Okay, they got nothing, that's amazing. That's absolutely yeah, amazing. To... Come on, let's draw something relevant, like something really good. Aven, Aven, Aven. Yes, I mean, yes, honestly, Aven. Like, you, don't, uh. you don't even need Aven Mind Sensor because basically everything that Aven Mind Sensor shuts off, almost everything is shut off by Teak anyway. Mm. But now we, we can't really do all that much, even though like if we ever get a second Birds, we can actually hard cast a Mind Break Trap. Or if you get yeah. Script Ranger, we can script also Ranger. do that. Which is pretty cool. I, I think I a pretty safe start is to Wasteland them, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, there is a world where we play Caracas first. I don't like it's yeah yeah. They don't have beast within. <laughs> but what are we doing? Beast within. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you're thinking about everything. I like that. <laughs> Can you play a little faster? No. Hey, dude, what? The, he's behind, or they are behind on time. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, look at this. Okay, what are the? Are we shuffling back or are they shuffling back? Yeah, you're shuffling, shuffling back. Okay, okay I, I like this this position right now because now they're like on. I, I'm not even sure like why is there endurance, but okay, whatever. Mm. Uh, and then I, I mean, we can play ooze. I don't hate it. It, it uses our mana at least, and we keep up sorts of plowshares, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm happy with actually tapping the the crackers here and then leaving up the green or white. Because we can't eat the dried arbor if needed. Yeah. yeah. I guess there's just like endurance coming in. We have a lot of extra life. We paid to have 19 extra points of life. So feel free to take any of those away. Okay, so let, let, let's think about this. Um, obviously, we have no path to victory. Have to go. <laughs> like, obviously, no! we have no path to victory. Oh, no! Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never uh... going to financially recover from this. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> Upon is like, oh, dude, shit, this. <laughs> okay, we won, I guess. But but seriously, like, looking at the board, like, we have no clear way to to win anytime soon, right? Uh, not like neither really nor strategically um so mm -hmm. what are we afraid of here i guess a big glimpse but there's nothing we can do yeah i guess if the opponent left we can't really draw the extra card anymore i, I never know how this works can, can we draw extra cards i believe so it never really works for me once like after the first couple of seconds okay we anyway we, we <laughs> kind of managed to be devs it's like not yeah. a horrible position even though there's like a lot of things that could still go wrong but let's see. <laughs> yeah, the, the team's nice you know, there. And then we have the Ooze to come a 3 3. Could potentially swords the Endurance to start just attacking. But yeah, actually, that doesn't. Do I feel very good. naked in that they, spot. They, they can just like. Now, this is the like hand that I want against. Uh... Against Fs? Yeah. <laughs> this hand is like super, super. Like, if they ever have Wasteland, we are in trouble. But on the other hand, we are on the draw. So we draw like two extra cards before we. That would matter. So I think we keep it, right? Hmm. I'm not too unhappy. Like, even if they go, like, dual pass, dual pass or something. 
Well, I'm, I'm somewhat unhappy because a lot of things could go wrong here. But if we if we draw turn one, let's say Noble Hierarch, that that would be amazing. We go turn one Noble Hierarch, and then we get the turn two Aven Mines and so. Oh, that oh, interesting. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, here, I'm probably happy to play the mum. Already. Oh, because they would have to have. Uh, red source and removal spell, and at least like days, uh, on a creature isn't too bad. I'd much rather a creature here get okay. days than one sword. Okay, let's go for that. I'm also not sure what this is. Yeah, I don't know. This this was introduced recently. I think that's something about like abilities stacking. Uh, I think previously this used to be like F seven. Like, I've used F7 oh. with Nettle Sentinels uh, every once in a oh. while, but not that much. Okay. Yes. Now it's an interesting position, because we could play Wasteland and then play Swords on the Flip Delver. Play around Days. I think we have to. And then... I think you have Do to. we get they, rid of like the... if they want to daze and give us the card advantage? That's that's okay. And mm -hmm. I think I will very aggressively wasteland that. They only have like three cards. Yeah. Having this as well is quite nice. Means we just have yeah, that, that extra that, white that, source if needed. That helped out quite a bit. It's funny they even lightning bolted mother. Um, I mean, it's the only time they can really lightning bolt mother. But I think in a position like this, they probably shouldn't care about mother in the first place. They should just like have the extra reach. Yeah, that's very true. There's only like, you know, some decks might play Scrib Ranger, which is the only flyer, but otherwise Maverick's just a deck that has a hard time dealing with the air. Dude, you have a lot of people in chat. I don't know how many people are watching. I usually try not to look at that, but I just like see. Hey chat, hope everybody's having a good time. Please enjoy the stream. <laughs> uh, okay, so we know they have days. Uh, so I think you're probably happy to lead on the Wasteland and not Play the savannah into another wasteland, and that way we still have two mana yeah. next turn for sword or Thalia. Actually, let me let me let me quickly recap what they did. They revealed wasteland, played wasteland, took out the savannah. Okay, and they kept on the ponder, and they only have like three cards in hand. Okay, and one of them you said stays. Yeah, it probably yeah. has to be like savannah pass. Uh, oh, you play this? wasteland pass, wasteland pass, yeah. wasteland pass. All good, all good. Dude, if I wanna, I wanna be, uh, I wanna get like one time walk here. I want to run out like, I don't know, like Thalia and, and make life hell for them. Dude, so many Delvars, but we can beat Delvars. We can like draw cards that actually do something. The Tireless Track are not for this matchup, really. Hmm, okay. Haha, <laughs> haha. Still um, not updates. I think we just see so what... What's, what's the upside of playing the bird here? So let's say we play the bird here, the next one we're going to have like three mana. So we could... Swords to plowshares and then Thalia gets dazed. That's not great. We could Thalia first and pass, but then we just like take too much damage. Uh, we, yeah, I think there's like almost no upside to playing the bird here, right? Uh, yeah, I guess maybe swords on flip Delva. Yeah, that's that's like the only the only options is like either bird pass. Or sorts of plowshares pass, and I think mm. we don't have enough time to to wait for the bird, especially since the bird doesn't really do anything for us next one, unless we draw a land, I guess. In which case, is it going to be like super crazy if we draw a land? I guess it's pretty cool because we can like sort Thalia and do everything around days. But uh, let's say we take six damage here down to five, and then we take another guaranteed three damage down to two, assuming everything resolves. Uh, whereas if he sorts here and then we take down to eight, yeah, I think we have to sorts here. It's just like so much better. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's worth playing around like force of negation, and we're still going to see what um, gets revealed anyway. Yeah, we we basically at this point we completely ignore any counterplay the opponent has because we lose to most sources of interaction. Yeah. At least this will be it's a just... um. Oh no, flip. It's, it's a small, small. It's small, but they still drew. So that tells me it's maybe another wasteland. Or it's going to be Murktide. It's yeah. almost guaranteed going to be one of those two. It's not expressive it's like, Okay. Actually, Unless it's had would a... have had that in hand. It's actually like, at this point, it's like super interesting. 
because I mean, we, we rule out that they forgot to use the fetch land, right? So they must have drawn something that's non-instant sorcery that they still wanted to draw. And at that point, it's, it really feels like it must be Wasteland if they don't play Murktide here. Yeah, it's going to be Wasteland or Murktide. That's the only card that I can think of. Is... Yeah, but they didn't. They played oh. Expressive Iteration, which is like so much worse than Murktide here. So I almost want to believe that they messed up. But okay, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Oh, da, 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 da. We still know about and... the days. Yeah, days isn't that that big of a deal because we only can cast one spell each turn anyway, pretty much. Mm, that's uh, true. I, I mean, you, technically, we could trade that Thalia for the days, but that's not even all that great. I think we just run out the bird, right? And we hope it's. Yeah, because Bird into Scrib Ranger does allow us to. If we draw a land, uh, we can Bird into Scrib Ranger, which is nice. Playing around days. We can't play Thalia as well playing around days, but we can get pretty close. The question is, do we want to wasteland them off the red if this resolves? Uh, oh, wait. Did they miss a land drop? Um, Pond miss, did miss a land drop. Um, I'm pretty sure. Because we were saying like they might play wasteland, but they actually played nothing. Mm. Uh, you know what? We probably actually should wasteland that. Yeah, yeah definitely wasteland that. Also turns off Bolt the Bird. But it's tough because obviously we know about days. Wasteland's great for us for days, but I think taking them. But the days, the days almost nice. makes me happy just because like it's another card that doesn't kill us. Mm. <laughs> the days I don't worry all that much about. But they did draw an extra card to the bobble, so that makes it, made it somewhat more likely that they would have another red source. Okay, they got that. So let's say, best case scenario, we draw a land. What do we do here? I guess we just draw out Thalia. This is the one thing. Did not shuffle with Pond. Or did they put something? Can, can you scroll to the bottom of the graveyard? Uh, yeah. They okay. put nothing. Yeah. So good chance that there were... Okay, grip... Oh, oh dude. <laughs> that would be so sweet. Uh, I guess... We still have dry Arbor on the library, right? Correct. So we can either get Dryad Arbor here, or we straight up run out Thalia and probably make them days, which sets their mana development back a turn. Mm. Uh, so next turn they can only really Merc tight, and then we untap, and hopefully they don't have another days, and then we resolve Script Ranger, untap two things, have two mana for Senate for something, but we, uh, it's, it's... Yeah, it's, it's tough. The other upside hard. of... If, 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 so I was going to say the other upside of uh, making them days now is that we know they want the card on top, so they're, they're not going to get the value of DLC. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, that's that's another good one. Um, yeah, so actually, so we are, we explored that scenario. So the other scenario is we are we get dried up. So what happens afterwards? We untap with a, like not very much life, Take and six. then we have like five mana, which gets like strip ranger untap mind sensor. Trade for for this dude. But let me let me think about it. One, two. We go from uh, one, two, three. Two then we still lose the mind sensor. Yeah, we still we still lose the mind sensor to days in that case. Uh, yeah, well, maybe maybe. The, the the thing is, like, they can't just like straight up ignore Thalia. That that's the problem. Like, if they if they want to, they they don't even need to days Thalia. They can just like do Murktide and keep days up. This is. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think drawing out the days is it just makes it so much easier for next turn. But the thing is, if th there's a re real chance that they won't daze us, mm. and if they have like Merktide plus another land, okay, okay. So at this point, we're basically playing the game, assuming they just like can't have anything beyond a Merktide. Like Merktide is pretty pretty likely. We probably straight up lose to Lightning Vault if Dava flips, especially since they kept on top. Mm. We've only seen one. Okay. Yeah, they flipped on Lightning. Oh, okay. they didn't have a red source. Wait, they huh. they had a didn't they just like have a red source in hand? Didn't they yeah, just did like they... bounce a, a volcanic? Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> But we're we're probably like dead either way. Um, as soon as they hit the next turn, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> I guess, yeah. We probably just like straight up concede. 
<laughs> the opponent probably missed it, but, but we were dead on board. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, hello, we're getting island. <laughs> they even kept the lightning bolt on top. <laughs> oh. Okay, cool. All so, right. I see one, two, three, four, maybe five, but probably more like four cards you want to bring in, right? Yeah, I think uh, these four probably stand out. Probably uh, <laughs> these two more than the chokes, but still choke, obviously quite relevant. Yeah. The, or, um, the only like reason I would even be looking at Teak is submerge, but that's just like not, yeah, let's ignore Teak. Um, so what I take out here is Tireless Tracker, Collector, Oof, Libra. Yeah, you already got them put out. Perfect. And then there's probably like one last slot, right? We have to think about. And I could see that being one of the mind sensors on the play, they're a little better, but overall they're not great. Like, especially if you draw the second mind sensor, it's not great. Like, it's basically a three mana removal spell for Diver or like a life gain spell against Murktide. Yeah, so I think basically take like, out one of those. Trading one for an endurance is quite nice. It's like just like a really nice three drop that does deal with uh, flying creatures as well. Yeah. It's like crazy scenario. Actually, yeah, let's not bring in the Deafening Silence. Technically, it can do like Deafening Silence is not completely crazy when you bring in one as a one off against a card that's really horrible in the matchup, but that's just like nothing. And I also would never bring in more than a single copy. But here, there's nothing we want to take out for it. Mm. Yeah, those endurances are going to be really nice in this matchup. Oof. Ah! Ah, close, close. Ship it, ship it back. Close. Okay. Okay. Very playable. Yeah, probably just getting rid of one hierarchy here. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. I'm not even sure. Like, I could almost see like keeping the second hierarchy. I like the aggressiveness that we can project here. Like attacking for five. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, over the bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, let's let's go for it now. Let's do this. Probably like hierarchy first turn. Yeah, I think just because the bird has utility of being a flyer, like it can be a fog, but mm. I don't want to see End the Festivities. It's a card that I grapple with a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember when Sutter's Persecution was a thing, like when, when oh, Thomas Esper, Herzog. Esper and everything was, was a deck in Legacy. Esper, Stoneblade, Maverick, Canadian Threshold, like the, the trifecta back then, and they would like Sutter's Persecution your board, and you're like, Bleh! <laughs> I wish I was part of that metagame. Well, right, you can always recreate it if you want to. That's true, yeah. Like Actually, I played in uh in the pre innistrad Legacy with a uh, I know Callum played it as well. That was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I never actually actively played it, but from the decks they posted, they actually played it like I think once or twice at the at London, and yeah, that was cool. That must at least from decks that I've seen. Three words. But now you know what? I'm I'm kinda in love with Painter. It's it's so crazy. Like I, I played the Legacy Challenge yesterday with Painter after quite a while again. It's so much fun. And I never, I never ever thought I would see myself playing a red deck because red is my least favorite color. Like my second least favorite color is black, but I still like like there's a huge gap between black and red. Whereas otherwise black is like rather close to the other three colors. But red is just like I, I don't like red as a color in magic. And now here I am loving a mono red deck. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what do you what do you want to do here? Uh, yeah, okay. Completely destroy direct into like oblivion by end the festivities, right? Exactly. Uh, like I kind of don't mind just playing bird out, attacking for one, and then endurance next turn around days. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Uh, it's but... very, very different from what I would do. Would you? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to get Scrib Ranger because I don't want to lose that early on. Yeah, that would would be really bad. Uh, I don't I even do want to play need Scrib Ranger. Yeah, like Spirit's nice because it's disruption and a threat, and we can currently play yeah, it around like, days. Yeah, Spirit's at at its best right up right now. Mm. Like because like on turn three they're gonna have something. Uh, well, okay. Do you, do you not want to fetch and, and then like at least consider attacking for one? Because I'm actually like the, the decision for me right now is to definitely play Spirit because it's going to be really good next turn. Whereas mm. on the third turn, it's not going to be as good anymore because of expressive iteration. But the decision for me right now is do I also want to play the Birds of Paradise because they like it, it would be insane for them to daze that because we still get the same effect mana wise and mm. they set themselves back to one lands. Um, and I think at this point, this hand is just like we, yeah, we get fucked by end of festivities. I mean, 
whatever. It's yeah, that's what it is. I think the other thought here is just going for another Savannah and like kind of uh, building out the board of jewels and not really trying yeah, to play around like Wasteland. I definitely like the second Savannah a lot while you're mm. here. And yeah, like I said, um, if we if we lose to Anther facilities, that's just like that's it. Um, but if we don't, then we untap with four mana on the next turn and maybe even five. And then we, with five mana, we could do absurd stuff. And that way we could also like run endurance out before they ever get like a chance to 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 make Merc Titan stuff. Like the longer they think about this, the better for us. Damn. Like I, I was hoping they would think about this a little longer because if they think about it for a long time, then there's almost no chance they have end of festivities. At least now it's hard for them to also dig for it. Mm. Oh, but this is an immediate fetch, and that's just like the only thing that would they would fetch for is like uh I was gonna say Letra Shredder. Oh, it's rough. Okay, we were gonna get roughed anyway. Oh, at least we don't lose the bird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasteland? Swords. Okay, swords is cool, right? Turns yeah. off their, their sh uh, Merc Tide, kinda. Um, I would actually... Or oh, let me tell you, let me first say what you wanna do. I kinda just wanna green sound through another Noble Hierarch and attack for one. Ah, uh, do you think... The, just... the, the problem I have with that is like they have six cards. And I mm. think that the green sun needs to be a business card. It needs to be fat. It needs to okay. do something. Whereas if we if we just like make that another mana, then they're gonna be like, oh sweet, we, you you just like that. You, you're basically turning it into a land at that point. Yeah. If it's a land, like oh, we are so low on cards that do something. Like I would very aggressively just endurance on the upkeep. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh... I mean, you get wrecked that by days, but so be it. There's even a chance maybe it's not there. It's probably still there, but. On the other hand, like if, if if endurance gets dazed, then they they can't express a declaration, or at least they can't do it properly unless they find like a uh, mm. bubble. I just want to be fucking aggressive. Like I'm, I don't mind like sometimes trying to be losing to stuff. I want to make life hell for the opponent, especially if I'm. If my... You're already nice. like in a really bad position. No, I like that a lot. So I like that a lot. Yeah, I think we're, uh... we're like a caged animal here. Because yeah, it would suck to like green suns for noble, and then attack and with then bird, and then endurance. they're just like. Exactly, yeah. Or like play a Merc Tide, you're like, oh well, could have kind of played around that. <laughs> like I see that that Senate eventually either becoming a knight or uh, another endurance. Okay, I guess that's okay. Oh, and then it gets taste. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, that's kind of cool because now they can play a land and make a reasonably sized uh, Merc Tide and then at least they get to trade for that. Okay, just Delva, okay? Hmm. I wouldn't even mind drawing like Maze of Lich or something here. Hmm. Is there anything reasonable we can send it for for two, I guess, Ooze? Yeah, Ooze um. or... S I actually don't mind Ooze. Because it might even force yeah. them to Merc Tide a little bit earlier than they want to. But the thing is, I don't think they have Merc Tide now, because they would have played it last turn, right? Yes, two... So I think at this point five, we can kind of rule out Merc Tide being in hand right now. Mm. So what else would they have? There's a good chance they sided out forces, as they often do, at least a couple of forces. Hmm. Yeah, maybe Ooze is just like the best we can get, because it also like... Like, Ooze on its own wins the race against Delva here, right? And if they have a Dragon Rage Channeler, we probably still win the race. So, mm. the, the truth is, if Ooze hits the board, I think it's just gonna die. But there's also no winning the game by not casting Green Sun Senate here. It would be also cool if we ever... It would be cool if you ever got something that we could send it for for two in Maverick. It actually does something as it comes into play. Okay, that's that's an okay trade, I guess. Uh, Moloch. Oh, uh, oh, that's the one that that fights, right? Yeah, deals two when it comes into play, uh, which is but the two. It has, has one big problem. It has red and its mana cost. It does have red and its mana cost, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> oh, but that's a cool card, definitely. Okay, here comes more. Uh, here comes the Merc Tide. I would guess they must have drawn it for the turn now since they didn't make it last turn. Hmm. So we sort that one. And what's the other card we know about? Expressive Iteration, right? The, uh, no. Oh, brainstorm, brainstorm, Brainstorm. Yeah, okay. That's pretty nice. I don't mind sourcing oh, this turn. Would be so good. Actually, I guess we have to do that. I would, 
Imagine if we got the knight online, and then we find Maze. That would be so great. Mm. Uh, but we take 10 next turn, like at least 10, and they're going to have a Brainstorm. Is the knight at least going to survive a Bolt? Yeah, but we lose the Bolt anyway. So they can't have Bolt. They can't have Daze. They can't have Forest of Will because we can't beat those cards. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we sort the Plow Thrust, the, the Merc Tide. Yeah, it's like I don't mind. Like it would be, it would be really bad if we sword tier, they brainstorm, and then I guess they probably wouldn't play wasteland and wasteland us because they probably want to play a fetch land to actually fetch away from the brainstorm. No, I'm thinking they would of like wasteland, they would yeah. very much wasteland if they can find a wasteland here. Yeah, yeah. Which, just, which, just like the card quality, like whatever. But if you can actually affect the board when the opponent is behind, like go ahead and affect the board. I I don't I don't mind. Like if we go to ten. We take Tango to five. We untap with the knight. We have maze. Okay. And then we have swords. And okay, let's let's go for the knight. Let's go for the knight. Like surely they didn't have an, me. another days here. I don't know why. In in my head we were going to three, but you're right. We actually go to five. And the the swords obviously plays around days a lot better than um, the knight does next turn. Yeah. But. And like what we hope to see here right now is just like expressive iteration and then whatever pass. Hmm. Oh, another Merc. No, why? Oh, oh that's, that's good. so good. <laughs> okay, well. Oh, man. At least I, they can do both now. Yeah, but it does. Oh, they have Force. Oh, okay. Force. Well, that's just... Pitch Brainstorm. That's just game. Yeah, that's just dead. Game. Okay. Uh, that, there was a chance to be had, but <laughs> not, not this time. Tough. I liked, I, I, I I liked making them have the. I definitely like making yeah, I, I, I like that you really pushed for, for the knight to be cast. I think that's actually, now that you, you, that you made the case for it, I think it's actually a much better play than, than playing super defensively with swords. I'm getting on your level, slowly, but I'm getting on your level. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> all right. And I wouldn't even say sometimes Daiba has it all. Like, this was a reasonable draw from Daiba. It's just like not, not something super crazy. Mm. Our Ooh, draw nice. wasn't the greatest in the world, but I mean, that's just like what happens sometimes. Oh, this is all against a Yorian deck. Sweet. Mm. I mean, let's hope it's not Dothan Texas. But... Exactly. Uh, dude, can we just like be on the play? I would love to be on the play. Wizards should introduce a mechanic where you, you know, if you pay 20 wizard secret layer bucks now, we can put you on the play. Yeah, or like, no Actually, playing blue? You both hey. get to be on the play. You do your first turn together. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Most likely insinuating. Uh, can, can you look at the artwork from the planes? It reminds me of Scott Lyon. Yeah. It is very Scott nice. Lyon. Yeah, I can. I think I can yeah, see Eli up here in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Happy to so get yeah, rid of a fetch early. Yeah, I was gonna say I would also do that. I think I would like to keep the second one in case we eventually find a uh, tireless Tyler tracker. Tracker. But let, nice. let's actually see how the game develops from here. Yeah, it's interesting. So if they swords here, then like board us. It's not great for us, but it's not great for them either. Like, like they don't really want to swords this, right? Uh, if they're a control deck, they kind, especially yeah. the first game, they kind of want to. I guess that's why they thought about this for so long, because they, they'd rather keep the swords for a creature that actually met us, because mm -hmm. we're gonna have mana, and the, like the first game, that we, we can't tempo them out nearly as well. Oh, it's this. Okay. Never mind. All is different. All the swords makes a lot more sense. Um. You can just stall here. So, fine. yeah. The, is, there, is there any way they can draw a card here? Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, I mean, it makes our library worse if we do draw it, but mm. uh, I, I guess Thalia is okay. Like, I wouldn't even mind just having Thalia here as a removal spell for their Thalia, because I think yeah. their Thalia is probably better, seeing that we play Green Suns. The only reason, um, the, the thing I would have done differently is play the forest here because it makes us little, look a little weaker than we actually are. So maybe uh, they would wasteland over playing mm. like a three mana spell that's relevant. Like a, um, I was going to say Guardian of the Galaxy, no, Recruit of the Guard. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> got that uh, secret layer yet. <laughs> this makes me think they have a second one, but if they're going to spend their turn playing a second one, I don't really mind, especially with Ramen up next turn potentially, or even... Maybe I mean, holding we, we totally block that, right? We absolutely mm. block that. Especially since we don't have like equipment in the deck. 
Again, if they want to play a second one here, then it's great. Then we, we basically spend two mana to, you know, just like have them spend four mana in a way. And their mm. card that doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, the Wasteland came out either way. And yeah, I guess at that point we just spirit it up, right? Or, or what if we get extra mana? No, we, we can't really do that. It's just like... We could Green right. Suns for Dried Arbor. And then next yeah, turn, Ramanath the back Wasteland. Oh, we didn't have Wasteland. I thought we had Wasteland. Oh, so so I was like, first I was gonna say I think that the Green Sun Senate needs to turn into into business into fat again. But now mm. that I think about it, we have Ramu Ramu Nap. That how do you pronounce that? Excavator plus Horizon Canopy. And if we do that, then we almost have it active. We still don't. Mm. Uh, but that's actually much better than Spirit. I guess we can play around Spirit by activating Canopy in the opponent's turn. Now oh, you know what? You you actually kind of convinced me. I actually want to accelerate now. Or maybe I convinced myself, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I like that a lot, especially if they're on the wasteland plan. Hitting hit on mana is quite nice. I guess it gives us a couple more outs that we can draw into. I mean, if they source the plowshares and wasteland here, then that's still not the end of the world because then they're down to two cards. Mm. Yeah, wasteland, sure, whatever hit us. Oh, interesting, they don't go after the mana. Okay. <laughs> Mirror match almost. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Dude, let's get it down, huh? right? Um, do we want the canopy in play next turn? Uh, so what happens next turn if we have it in play? Then we can play the excavator. Then we do mm. get. Then we tapped off it anyway. I mean, I don't hate it, but I, I'd rather like not lose the life for it. Um, I mean, we we are gonna lose the life to the fetchland anyway. But we yep. don't need to lose life for the, the canopy now. Yeah. And we're going to get that uh, back anyway. So like for like Tiles Tracker or something, we do have that. Uh, yeah. I'm the card is so good, Knight. I th yeah, I think the Knight is just best here. I was thinking of yeah, like Ramanap as bait for like a Skyclave Apparition, but being able to get Wasteland next turn and then also have the Ramanap online is just so huge. I mean, they, they already have the initiative right now. We, we just like have to take some risks. And if they have Skyclave, that's just like what it is. There's also a word where I kind of want to Wasteland them here next turn, which we can do actually. Let's see what they find. They probably find like Solitude. Oh, if they find Solitude, that's annoying. Oh, Skyclave. Okay, okay. So they have X plus Skyclave. And X might not be a land. <sighs> Ooh. Okay. This one gets around Thalia, that's kind of cute. Um, so how do we maximize our mana here? One, two, three, four. And then we get a discount on any creature we play. Uh, uh -huh. So let's say we want to waste on them, but we also want to get Cradle. Uh, we can't do everything. We can uh, play Ramanap, get a fetch land, fetch for Bayou, get the black, sack it for Cradle, play the Grist, because it isn't taxed under Thalia, to get both out. And can, but... can, can, we, can we still Wasteland them? Because Wasteland is like the big thing I want to do this turn. Yeah, we can't. Okay, then in that case, I think it's better to play the Excavator. Yep. And probably... Or what if we play... Yeah, we, we have to play the Excavator, and then we could get the fetch land. Or rather, the Savannah, I guess. Mm. Like, right Are now, even... they can't really attack very well. And if they get Skyclave next turn, that's okay. We can eventually kill Skyclave with, like, Grist. And, yeah, that's what I like here. Mm. Can't really Wasteland them twice. I, I guess what we could do is do something like Wasteland them and then replay the Wasteland, but I don't think that's all that great. Yeah, uh... I... I think I want to get the Windswept Teeth for Black Mana because they're most likely, if they draw a land, they're going to get rid of the Knight. Oh, but then they... No, because then we yeah. can actually just get back a land anyway with uh, Ramen Up. So we don't have to get the Black Source so, online right now. I, I think I would actually play like the Dryad Arbor because that's just like another random Trump blocker that could block um, uh, Geist. Uh, not Geist, yeah. it's called Spirit for Labyrinth. Uh, whereas if we did anything else and the Spirit might attack in and we don't really want to trade the Spirit for the Excavator. Love it. So now they're the super high-end players if they don't have another land. And if they do have another land, that's still not the end of the world because we have a value engine and a planeswalker and they just mm. tapped out for Dark Banishing on or, or Knight, kind of. The pause and here makes they don't me have another they land. don't. Well, they... 
<laughs> if they don't, then it's really hard to come up with like a reasonable play from their side. Maybe they have a sort of plowshare and they're trying to figure out whether to target the knight or the excavator. Hmm. Yeah, this one we just take. Oh, actually, no, we. Ah, what? Haha, do we do we want uh, do we want the extra mana? Like, w w what can we do with the extra mana next turn? Uh, oh. no, I we think could we're just gonna play like Grist. Yeah, yeah, and like trying to, but we can also have like a lot, lot, lot more mana next turn. So mm. we could like play Horizon Canopy from hand, and then Knight for our Black Source. And then we have one, two, and then we could use Horizon Canopy on that turn if we don't block with Dryad Arbor. Actually, I like just taking the damage here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, four. They had it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Not too bad. It does turn on Flick Wisp as well. I guess Recruiter does, but Gris now seems pretty nice. Yeah, Gris and Bracelet again, I guess. They go after Actually, the we can't do both. Oh, they go after this? Interesting. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, does this mean we can, uh, if we want, we could Grist? Ooh, okay. Here's the line. We get to... Uh, that's tapped. Yeah, we get to, uh, no, because we don't get the Ramanap back, we get back a 3-3. Three, three. I thought we could, like, sack the Dryad up to Grist and get it back with yeah. Ramanap, but we just get a 3-3. Three, three. I think we just play the, the Spirit and Wasteland them again. Hmm. I d actually, don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Oh, too late. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> so the idea was that we sack the planes, and that way we... No, no, we, we probably play the planes. So that we sack the planes to the night to Wasteland, and then we keep up the, the... This way we keep up a Savannah, so we can represent the sorts of plowshares. Uh, yeah, that's that's very true. I guess we still could if we get rid of the Savannah here, but... Yeah. But no, I think we just, we just like... We can yeah, still soak up some damage, it's okay. Yeah, we probably sack the, the planes. We probably have to. Keeping them off three mana is just so huge. Yeah, and right now they have like a bunch of, of draft creatures, and we can still like soak up a little bit of damage, and then we're gonna have a planeswalker. Yeah, I wonder if they attack with just Thalia here. Oh, I guess we just take it, right? <laughs> mm. I guess they attack actually with a lot more, almost everything, oh, actually. Okay. And now I would consider just like trading the spirits because spirits represents the, the most damage. I mean, the other option would be to trade for the the recruiter, recruiter? because yeah. it's like better with flicker wisp. But I I think they wouldn't even attack with it in that case. And if they have flicker wisp back on a flicker wisp, the, the um, skyclave, the skyclave anyway. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just like trade off the biggest damage potential. Interesting that they went after the excavator. Okay, three mana, flick of us, bah, okay, we might lose this game. On the other hand, we, we get our thing back, right? At least as mm. a 3-3, as a three, three, which is, like, quite relevant, and then we can, like, grist, and then we get another 3-3, three, three, and then we have to top deck, but that's okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, how much damage can we still soak up? Probably not yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're on zero cards yeah. as well, so I don't mind just going for Tyler's here, play Canopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have to. We, we have no other option anyway. Okay, let's see. Bunch of damage coming in again. Actually, not that much. Like, Flicker Wisp. And then that's pretty much it. That's the only card that can reasonably attack. Okay, this is... I hope they just put Yorin into the hand. Yes. Okay, good. That makes me think. So they didn't play a land. Hmm. They didn't salt plowshares anything. Um, so what do they have in hand? Maybe like, like a Batiscal or like a Wile. Eldra? Oh yeah, Batiscal, Wile. Yeah. Wile. Yeah. And maybe another Thalia. But, yeah, that's not. So we have to be careful with the Collector Oof, right? Because that turns off our, our clue Please. tokens. I guess we just like draw a card with a clue, with the two Savannas, and see what happens. Wouldn't mind drawing like a Wasteland. Fetchland would be cool. Okay, it gets rid of the Thalia. Eventually, right? We don't need to do it right away. Hmm. Uh, what if we... 
Yeah, we can't play our land this turn, and we probably don't want to play any of the one drops that we could draw. I think we just like pass, right? Sit back, draw a card at their end of turn, bounce their Thalia at some point. Yeah, my only thought here is because we have the illusion token and the dried upper, can we attack here with the tiles tracker for five or for four? So what could go wrong? So we take a guaranteed three in the air, we got onto four, then they send in everything. We put the token on, let's say, the Skyclave, and then we take a guaranteed like three down to one, and then we're dead to a flick of a spot. So we basically lose our turn of like if we do that, if they mm -hmm. send in everything. Because then a flick of us becomes lethal because we are not at four, but at one. Uh, unless we throw in the, the dry double, which I really don't want to do. So I, I yeah. don't I don't really like attacking here if they want Yeah, because the, the canopy as well is an extra damage. We just take this. You know, this is big. We, we need them to not do anything here. Then we can try. Like, if they put any kind of extra, like, plus one initiative card here, then it's, it's pretty bad. Okay, that's, like, 0 0.5 or something. <laughs> so annoying. Especially if they get Solitude. Ah, oh, Solitude would be a big deal. Click of Okay, that's slow. Yeah, okay. Uh, we... do, do you want to do it like that? I, I'd rather keep the extra life. Yeah, so like this? Yeah. And then we can just return Thalia potentially. And that's that. Yeah. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Okay. Uzi boy. Uh, gain a little bit, li a little bit of life. Yes, right. Um, so we would play it like with Savannah and Caracas, something like that, maybe. Yeah. So what, what, what do they do with the Flick of Wisp next turn? They Flick of Wisp out the token, uh, we take a guaranteed three in the air, and then we don't have enough blockers unless we play Ooze. It's actually, it might actually be better to, to keep the Caracas up, because that negates two points of damage, which is their biggest attacker on the ground, other than the, the other two, two. Yeah, so we, oh, we would we, we would have the ooze as at least a three three. Is there a question? I don't care that much about the size size of the ooze. That's that, that's not like really a concern. Um, it, it's more about like what what if they send in everything after Flicker is being the token, and then we're gonna be and we can bounce the Thalia, which is the same as like preserving um one point of life total through the cavern, which we're gonna probably tap for something anyways. So let's say we do it like this. Da -da. Then we bounce the Thalia. Then we can gain two life. So we are down to up to two after the Flicker Wisp. And then we block this. And we block that. And we go down to one life. Yeah. So we can kind of survive on one life if we do it like that. And then that Thalia also stays off the board for a turn because it tapped out for Flicker Wisp. And then we probably die afterwards unless we can double so many creatures. Yeah. I mean, but that's probably the best thing we can do, I guess. So I, I would definitely tap the, the Horizon Canopy for for the use, just because it's it's the same as if we tapped Caracas, because Caracas also like gains life by tapping. Uh, but this way we get to keep Thalia off the board for a turn. No, 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 no. Oh, no, sorry, no. yeah, no. yeah, cool. So Savannah and this one, yeah. But it's gonna be rough. We, we really have to survive this turn. It's going to be so hard. We would probably stay alive at one life. Yeah, they could nearly just like attack for three in the air. Oh, yeah, and then like make us use ooze. I mean, just play the other wisp, taking yeah. out the ooze. Basically, we go to five here, and then we'll see. Oh, they just attack with this one. That also works. Yeah, so we eat there. And quite ready to go all in. Oh, that's mine. Huh. No respect for the gadget. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Okay. 
okay, in that case, they can do it like this. Yeah, they don't need to get a token then. And we actually get another token, but now they have two flyers. Mm. Oh, let's see. And don't forget to end of turn bounce the, the Thalia. Might just do that. And we are dead. Actually, we can draw a card for the turn with... Um, actually, mm -hmm. let, let's draw with the, the Caracas. Okay, never mind. Uh, we are dead either way. Okay, cool. But game two. Oh, and by the way, oh, dude, we are so gonna time out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, okay, cool. I like these. I'm not sure on, like, extra numbers of Force Vigors. I can't see the cards right now. It's like super blurry, uh, but I'm trying to remember oh. what we have. Um, so Maze makes sense, like a one-off copy of Force of Figure. I would even consider like more copies of Force of Figure because we probably want to take out Thalias. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's a pretty easy cut. Um, yeah. I don't mind the extra endurance just being like for the 3-4 four, four body. But I think that's just better yeah. than Thalia number 4. So I, I can't see it right now. How, how many slots do we still have available in the main deck? None. None so if we do it like this. Okay. Taking out four so Thalia, two Force of Vigor, yeah. one Endurance, one Maze. Okay, so it's basically like, should we take out the Ooze as well and bring in another Force of Vigor? And I think we probably do that. Okay. Because they are also going to have like Urza Saga, usually. Like in the in the seventy and the 80 card version, they usually have also Sagas, so we can like maybe get some, mm. some cool trades. Yeah, especially on the uh, the early starts where they have a vial with a non-basic. Like Saga Wild Chichi -chi get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. We have, we have a knight online turn two. Yeah, pretty happy here just to go for Savannah Noble. And then having access to, like, if they go turn two Stoneforge... And then we have our Maze of Ith of the Night. It's really nice. Ooh, that's actually quite nice. Ooh. Uh, I like that a little bit. You still play the Knight over it, right? Yes. My only thought is, uh, like, end step Mum next turn. Yeah, but fuck Mum. Mum we don't care about. Like, the game plan of the Sand is not, like, attacking. The game plan of the Sand is uh, Remote Excavator plus Horizon Canopy. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, because next time we can... Next time we're definitely going to play the Oof. Because, like, yeah. the, the wild on one, we don't really care all that much about wild on one. But we certainly care about wild on two. Yeah, I think sword would just be the best draw. If they went, like, non-basic, we could wasteland sword's mum and also collect the oof. Oh, they must have a second mum. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be tough. <laughs> oh, dude, we got so much stuff going on with the sand. Oh, my God, we yeah. probably need to get cradle at some point here. So mm. let's say we play Collector Oof, and then they probably get Mama to play, and then we get Cradle, and then we use Cradle to cast either Excavator or like get Ooh. a second Knight. I almost want to get a second Knight. Maybe maybe attacking is back on, I'm not sure. Um, uh, but actually Tireless Tracker is the idea. I think Tireless Tracker is actually what we want to do with the my, second Senate at some point. My thought is if we play Oof here, and they don't have a Mum for some reason... Uh, then we do get to green they... suns for grist. Okay. It's funny how, how we care about totally different things. Like, I don't care about mom at all. I care, I care about, like, drawing cards and board development. So, what I would do here is, now that I think about it, maybe we send it for tireless tracker, and then we get cradle and use cradle to cast collector oof. And then we go absolutely crazy on the turn after. Yes, the but then we, we, we can't draw off the uh, to tokens with the oof. Is there artifacts? Oh yeah, because then we have collector oof. Oh yeah, you're right. That's like the biggest, the biggest downside. You're right. <laughs> all good, all good. That, would, that would be really bad. So, so it's back to, to the Horizon Canopy plan then. Then we don't really need Tracker. Uh, on the other hand, we also don't know whether collector oof survives, uh, I guess. Um, but collector oof is so important. It's more important than the Tireless Tracker plan. What if we start on oof and see what they... If they put something in. I assume they put something in. And then I we mean, could still... Just, it's going to be a second mom. That's already, like, decided. And if they don't, that's also no problem. Then they just screwed up. But there's just, like, no way where they don't. 
that's not even like a scenario that yeah, you should consider really. Yeah, cool. Um, so oh. now we can green suns for another knight of cradle. Yeah, but but against double mother, like attacking is. I don't feel like we are winning this game by like attacking with early pressure. I think it's more like. What about Grist? We, then. Grist get rid of uh, one mum, and then we have the ability to stop it from dying next turn. Stop it from. Oh, you mean stop Grist from dying? I guess. I guess we can get Grist. I, I'm just like so sold on Ramunap, but I guess we can get Ram, Ram, Ramunap the turn afterwards anyway. So mm. yeah, I guess we can get Grist. Yeah, let's do it. Because I think double mom's just a bit too hard for a deck with four swords to get rid of. I don't care about mom. I don't care about mom. We attack past mom with uh, our own mom. Or we attack in the air, or we draw extra cards. Uh, oh, we do have our own. I don't care <laughs> about moms really all that much. Okay, cool. Should have actually held up another mana out. So I want to get rid of the noble here. Sadly, there wasn't a way to get like dried arbor and also a black source. I guess maybe if I got it early with the noble off the savannah instead of getting. Yeah. So the, the okay, that, that happened. I was gonna say like the worst case scenario here is if they sort the plowshares to collect off and kill Grist. Hmm. Uh, no attack first, because then I can't get a black source or the I can't get the cradle to play the uh the Grist. No, uh, I think the, Stefan is talking about like attacking with the noble oh, hierarch, which I guess he could have done. So we basically yeah, missed out on one damage. That's very that's true. Okay. Yeah. this is gonna be interesting like if, if they just like play creatures and stuff here we don't care all that much really uh mm. except if, if it's like maybe stoneforge Stoneforge would be annoying um like, like really annoying maybe, but on the other like, hand we have mace so that doesn't matter so let's say what, what's the worst case what's the worst thing they can do as in playing a creature to the board and how would we react to that probably and i don't really uh, see anything that we really care about i, I guess planes, skyclave apparition yeah planes into skyclave take out the oof and then attack the grist that would be giga annoying <laughs> that would be so annoying but apparently they don't have like a clear line maybe they're considering like well, they demonstrated that they don't have sorts they didn't have sorts of plowshares on our last end step so I mean they could have drawn it but it's so unlikely so I'm not really thinking about it mm. um, maybe they have like a non-basic land that they play here and they know that they got nothing else so they need to make their three drop work because we're gonna wasteland them like soon after maybe that's actually a thing Maybe they're considering like porting the cradle, which would be horrible. Okay, oh, okay. straight up solitude. Okay, that takes care of the Gris, but at least like at a pretty reasonable cost to them. Yeah, like a recruiter is kind of two cards, so not too unhappy about that. So they pitched. What did they pitch? Did you see what they pitched? Oh, uh, they pitched a recruiter of the guard. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, now I hope they part us, but they probably like should do something with their mana. Oh, they have they have wild available again. That's annoying. Mm. But yeah, we are basically back to to the just draw them out and throw eyes and cannot be planned. Yeah, I guess that happens. So what's what's your line here? Uh it's a tough one. Like we could wasteland the port and then uh two mana probably get rid of the forest for canopy play ramen up and then next turn we can draw a card play it again yeah i probably want to wasteland them it's so annoying because the wasteland is not going to be all that great and then just like play the ram up i agree mm. the, like the one scary thing that could happen but that in the end it's really only just damage is if they put in uh Stoneforge and get Kaldra. I mean, then we just take five and then we get the uh, mace. Uh, 
Yeah, at least we didn't, there have, like, a, we didn't have the scenario where we get to use it right away, but I mean, at that point, we just hope that makes sense. Is this going to be Stoneforge, I guess? No? Lines oh, oh, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that card is so good. Uh, we can't even, like, set it up in a way where we just, like, immediately replay it. Uh, it is an okay, artifact, at least, so we can potentially make them tap the mum and then blow it up. Tough. They do have to hold mana open for it, which is great for us. That's true, that's true. Wild on three is annoying. Wild on three is the most annoying wild of any of those. Like, the, the wilds on two, they usually just, like, produce something on the other side of the board, but the wilds on three, they, like, interact with your board, and that's just, like, so bad. By the way, where is our, where is our Aven Mind Sensor? I need it. <laughs> <laughs> right now we don't even need it all that much. Oh, it's interesting, they're going, like, no, there's no way they tap the Caracas here. Like, if they tap the Caracas here, we get free value. Yeah, we kind of get free value as well, because we can Wasteland the Gracchus and then go for draw off the canopy, replay the canopy. Smart. I like that. Actually, so this is where the, the draw step happens. Oh, swords. Ooh, okay. swords. Oh, actually, they have the mum, but... <laughs> I, guess... um, I mean, they might eventually use the mum to do something like, you know, proactively give protection, then we get swords. Uh, other than that, we can't really force them to do anything with it. I, I mean, we could draw, like you said, we could get the wasteland, wasteland, and I, I don't hate that. Maybe yeah. just like straight float the white. Actually, floating the white doesn't really do all that much because they just float the white mana as well. Yeah, so we can do this sec. It's still okay. We even have like our, our planes for like one or two turns down the road when we might need mace. Oh, so it's going to eat that now. Okay. Well, now we can use the oh. white to draw. Uh, unless okay. we want to keep the white um, so Wait, we can play don't, like don't a mum. Don't just like let all of these sort of abilities resolve first? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just like, I mean, it doesn't really make a difference, but just like, just in case they have something super crazy. And now um, we should use green to draw to keep a white. Oh, in the oh, 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 oh. No? Do, do we? Do we? Um, we can still play our land. Yeah. I guess we have two colors of each. There's a world where maybe drawing into. I mean, we are probably replaying the, the horizon canopy. Um, oh, of I'm course, just, like, yeah. The, the, only re the only reason I, I was like, gonna keep up the the um what's what? it called cradle was because i kind of was thinking about what if you draw like script ranger but i mean you can also tap cradle i mean it's okay mm. it's, it's fine let's just float, float it like this i mean we're we're really gonna time out <laughs> okay i'll uh, just replay it and then play the birds actually we draw a card first before we play the birds yeah Especially oh, if we card. draw into mum, so we will use the white tier to draw. Then we have both. I mean, this way they can eventually eat it, but that's okay. And then we just play the birds and pass. Do you want to turn off card animations? Um, it's the the cockpit on the top left and the bottom right, so we might like, lose less time. You know, you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah, like even little things like oh, it's the cock we got right on the bottom bottom left, not the bottom right. Yes, yeah. On right. the very bottom. I, are you still here? Yeah. Can you hear me? Ah, okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. I want to turn off card animations. Oof. Uh yes. Oh, we got nothing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we have our two basics in hand, classic. <laughs> okay, now we have mace. To like deal with that shit. One card. So it's basically just like play Savannah from from the. the... Oh, that's an enchantment, right? Our yes. artifact creature. Oh, but we have no green. Okay, just like play Savannah, and I guess. Uh, so we could also just have played the other thing, but we don't really. I don't want to. Attacking with yeah, the sure. remnant. Ah, uh, it loses to flick of us, but okay. Yeah, but then if they tap their mum to save it, we do have the swords, which is quite nice. I think they would just, like, sort of trade, I guess. But let's see. 
And I really, I really like where we are in this game right now, but we might just not have enough time. Maybe, you know what? Maybe you just like play this and I, I just like, I, I observe so we can like play this <laughs> super fast. Yeah, it's always tough with like grindy games like this. Gracchus, sure. I think here I'm happy to get the maze. Yeah, yeah. By the way, where's our cradle? Is the cradle being... Oh, it has been exiled, okay. It got eaten, yeah. But if we ever resolve that force somehow, it's probably going to be super hard to actually resolve it um, through the mom. We, we just take the game. They literally have one card in hand. They probably like put Yorin into the hand if they, if they haven't already. Uh, I don't believe they have yet. It's okay. kind of nice because if they so draw into like... They have, they have one card and that's fine. You just, a like, green card it's not good. off the... A green card off the top would be really good because then we could Swords the mom. And then in response to giving protection, we can force these two. Yeah. Double sword. Okay. I guess, I guess planes. I guess we're just like building up to hardcast force of rigor here, which we're going to have next turn. But then we need five mana to do that. Force of rigor plus. Okay, we can still just chill and. I hope get they get there. greedy and try to like maybe wasteland or flick wisp this and then give pro green. <laughs> oh, it's a 10 10. Yeah, yeah. They, they could actually like maybe try something crazy. Going to him. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Yorian is going to become a. Th like, we really have to, to do something soon, but. I mean, you so could also we... just like swords the plowshares now. Yeah, swords the mum, make it tap. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then. Honestly, I would have actually swords the plowshares the, the creature. Because hmm. there's a world where they just like straight up let it resolve. Which like it's super unlikely. But if they do, mm, but we're that's true. Even happier yeah. if they yeah. Okay. And I guess this is just like Wait, wait, wait do we even play the forest? I mean we have to let let's play it from the graveyard. Oh no, we can't play it from the graveyard. Yeah. They eat it. We go one, two, three. I guess we could have tried. Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like we might have actually been able to eat it from the play from grave. We could have like generated plus one card advantage. We could have at least tried. Okay, done. Oh, it's so great they didn't put anything in. Yeah, just like hit them. Could have also used Swords last turn in response to Mum Activation just to get the Mum offline, which I think I should have. Do you basically use both of them? I, yeah, I guess we could have done that. Mm. Right now, there's going to be... Actually, we, we still have this for Yorian. Oh, better skull. Hello. <laughs> okay, I guess we still get mace. Hmm. Um, so, I guess we want to waste them this turn, right? Because the, otherwise, they're going to have five mana next turn. Yep. Us this to double wasteland. Yeah, it's we're at like in a pretty decent position. Um, we could even play the spirit here, I guess. Yeah, because we actually are. No, no, we, no, we can't. No, 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 we can't anymore. No. Okay. <laughs> we, we, like if we, if they waste on us and then they give protection, then they can just attack. We we could have played it on the first turn, but we we burnt the mana and and the first main phase. We, we can't do it. Oh, the off phase. the okay, yeah, sorry. Off the um extra plane. Yeah, yeah exactly. Still on three. Man, I'm so invested in this shit. <laughs> the time, like, the time <laughs> pressure is real. <laughs> this is where we start like thinking, like if we could draw our own mom, second we could one. actually like maybe win the game. Oh, yeah. This is 
this is, um, yeah. I guess it ends up being the same. Just let them do their thing. Just do whatever you want. We just we don't yeah. have enough time for anything. <laughs> this reminds me of playing Esper Wild against other wild decks. And you would literally <laughs> play like at lightning speed from the very beginning because somebody would usually time out in the second game because everything neutralizes everything else. Oh, that's sweet, dude. We have so much great stuff that we can do, but... Oh. Is there any land left in our deck that still does something relevant? I don't, I don't think, think so. Relevant. I think, like, Caracas, if they kept in Thalia, that's really it. Yeah, that's pretty much... I guess, yeah. You can't also really grow Knight unless they, they tap out. Yeah, Sash really good here. Is that the second one? Yeah, yeah second one. I've never seen uh, two versions. I'd never play around the second. You know second. what would be amazing to draw here? Force of Vigor would be an insane draw. Mm. Now we're talking. Like, assuming they, they ever, like, tapped out of, like, three mana for the Battle Skull to bounce, Force of Vigor would be insane. This feels like playing chess. It's just like, we are so far down on time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four mana. They are pretty close to getting Yorian, but now Yorian isn't all that like crazy. Oh, that's not good. H how big can we actually get that? Actually, we can't get any big knights. Do you already know what you're gonna do? I have no idea. Uh, so they have no. There's currently no lanes in the bin. So they can make. But they this... can also like, but they can yeah. eat their own stuff, right? There's a world where we just chump block, or maybe we double block in any way. That actually wouldn't be bad. Okay, they didn't do anything. Cool. Yeah, at least we can say like we've lost this, but we can put let the last three minutes into these next few turns and see how it plays out. I don't think I'm going to yeah. use the knight here. Yeah, you could grow to like location. some size for like temple reasons, but that's pretty much it. Mm. Yeah, and then once the Orion becomes active, we're just like screwed. Because now they have they have too much stuff. Like over the next two turns they can skyclave into Yorian Skyclave and stuff. It's dogs. Yeah, I think sadly right now we're just kind of spinning our wheels. Like, yeah, even if we stacked our deck, <laughs> we just don't have time for game three. Yeah, yeah. So just I guess they, they would Skyclave here and take out one of the Knights. Like, the Knights don't even matter all that much. Like, the Knights are almost like... I, I'm not even sure if they want a Skyclave here because, like, none of our creatures really matter all that much. There's probably, like, some kind of, like, double block. Like, what's the biggest thing they can get the, the Lion Sash? Can make it like a oh god, or really big seven seven. Can we get our dudes to seven? Uh, we can just like go to the next game, I guess, or rather next match. Next match, yeah, tough. But yeah, definitely a, uh, <laughs> a a a tough matchup to navigate. Uh, let alone with with like double commentary. It's always nice because I love yeah. just like talking through lines as well. I don't usually check the clock too much. <laughs> yeah it's in, in this kind of matchup like in, in these like I, I always think about like legacy decks as like this this family tree of decks and, like all of those decks like maverick and and um uh, death in texas and esper wild they they come down kind of like the same the same family tree of decks and whenever those meet it's gonna be a slugfest and it's gonna take forever and it's almost impossible to like commentate those in, in a normal match uh, let alone double commentate <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine like commentating like lands versus lands would be pretty brutal. 
Hmm, yeah, yeah, I guess the, the thing is, like, in Lance versus Lance, like, somebody can just, like, outright very quickly take the initiative and win the game, and the opponent never comes back. Whereas mm. here, like, everybody is so good defensively that, that they just, like, like, we are rather impotent offensively uh, outside of, like, Mother plus, plus Knight, which is, like, one of the ways we can quickly end the game. Oh, God, look at this. Oh, Not a big fan of this. Yeah, yeah just send this. We can't even send it for, for Dryad on the first turn. At least we're on the draw. Oh, oh good. Oh, good. Okay. oh, God. This makes me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely keeping. The question is, what do we yeah. drop? Uh, it's, for me, it's like between the Senate, the Mother, and the Wasteland. Ah, oh, interesting. For me, it's the Cradle, but maybe the Cradle is kind of like the unfair part that you need to get this hand going. Um, it could just be the Tracker and just allow us to get no, the Oh, the Tracker early. is like the game plan of the hand. Mm. I would say. The tracker is like the number one thing you want to do with the sand. You want to go like really crazy with the tracker here. Uh, of course, the mom protects it. Opponent. Oh no, we might again to seven. Oh, what if we send back the cradle? Then we go birds next turn. Then we go tracker next turn. Then we pass. Then we play the wasteland. Uh, if we send back the wasteland, then we go turn one birds, turn two mother into tracker. I like that a lot more. Yeah, actually, I would send back the wasteland, honestly. Okay. There's also four of them, so we have a pretty high chance of drawing into it if it's relevant. And we have ways yeah, to find the green suns. Ideally, we don't need them. Like, I would keep the wasteland <sighs> if we had, like, a good two drop. Like, if we had a good two drop, then we can go turn, um, turn two, two drop plus wasteland. Hmm. Well, oh, this is interesting. Which deck plays Preordain and, like, and, and Tundra? Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, blue, white, Omnitile. Yeah, or like maybe a uh, a mentor build of of blue white. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. I mean, scrib with cradle is just really nice. Scrib cradle tireless tracker. Let's do it. I guess if we wanted to, yeah, like you mentioned, right, we, we could, like, go Script Ranger, Mother of Runes, Cradle, Tireless Tracker. We give up one land drop to, which, which actually makes sense on the, since we have Tireless Tracker. Hmm, it didn't use removal. Yeah, I think it's just, like, Blue-White Omni. I'm pretty, and like, pretty sure it's too much, but I, I feel it's Blue-White Omni. The... Yeah, Scrib. I mean, it and then can't we can it's hard to play Cradle first here. Yeah, I guess it plays around like days. Yeah, if we get days, like, can't even play Mother then. Mana. I think I would have played Mother first and then Cradle. So that way, if they if they really want to fight, then at least we have Mother. But it's it's fine. No! Ah, oh, because cool, I was going to cool. go. Awesome. No, no, no. I, I, like, my, my, my screen messed up. I, I thought you had like, clicked something else. <laughs> no, I was going to get, get like, weird artifacts, and all of a sudden there was like another land appearing and it looked like you had played the Savannah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, this is what our cradle control feels like. Yeah, very much. Okay. This oh, is... please don't be determined. The, the, uh, the preordain, sorry, was a. Two cards on top. Okay. okay. So if they don't fetch on their upkeep here, I'm like, what the nice. fuck? Uh -huh. If they fetch oh, answer, yeah, it's probably like maybe doomsday, like a slow doomsday. Yeah, there. some some kind of Esper doomsday. That could also be it. And if it's es Esper doomsday, I would think like this could like be to fairy, but that's not really good. That's like really bad. Ah, uh, oh, Cephalid. of course. That shit, but we actually be of endurance, but probably won't do anything unless they they mess up. Yeah, let's just like let's see them do it and see whether they mess up. I'm trying to think we if there's a way. Make... So endurance doesn't really do much. But I'm trying to think if like Scrib Ranger does something where we can make them mill without wanting to mill. Uh, probably not. Like the, I'm, I'm at least I'm not seeing one right now. Like the the one way they can screw up is if they go. But red return without cable therapy and for endurance first. Yes, it's like the the one scenario where they can technically like get screwed. Otherwise, um, if you, the endurance at any point, you know that, right? Um, they just like mill the entire deck again and just do oh. it again. Yeah, we don't have a forest either, so I can't scrib. Oh, 
how they are keeping priority or what's going on here. And it's funny. Pretty normal list so far. I mean, that's that's also a word where they have cable therapy in hand. Hmm. Which means I, they have to. Trying to remember get what they some did in the second turn. Narcomibas. Do you remember what they did in the second turn? Uh, turn two was just land pass, and then they Brainstorm held up brainstorm. Into fetch land. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Hey, let's see. Maybe they screw up. Yeah, force of will is another thing. Like that. That one we can't influence. Um, mm -hmm. the, the one thing we can help for is that they just like screw up by by going for it without cable therapy and endurance first and then having nothing. Also, like cool to see the uh, 60 card version. Base, then we just like straight up lose. But if they That's okay, there's cable therapy. Let's see if they use it. Actually, what if we what if we do it now? Oh, too late. Okay. I guess that won't. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if they screw up. And so we are aware of that, but we are playing to the out that the opponent screws up. If you don't mm. do that, then you lose equity. <laughs> there we go. Okay, they did it. Did they get it? Okay. Yeah, then we just move to the second game. Um I like the I like the chokes and I like the Gaddock Teague. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure on what else. I do like the force like one or two force of figures. But Force of Vigas is certainly good. Um I don't hate. It's, it's kind of funny. I've never played the matchup um, from from the Maverick side. There's there's like a game plan you could put together. That's like deafening silence, and then deafening silence actually enables endurance. <laughs> yeah. Or mind okay. trap. Yeah. Because they can't cable therapy and dread return on the same turn as long mm. as we have deafening silence in play. So high mode deafening silence doesn't counter that combo on its own. But they, they, it counters the, yeah, you, you, you already mentioned it too. Yeah. It stops them from having protection for their combo. So let's look at it from the other way. Um, what do we side out? What do we not want in the matchup? I like even Mind Sensor in terms of St Stoneforge. They also mm. sometimes play this other wizard cycling thing. That, that's actually pretty good. Uh, Collector of Turns of Wire. Scavenging we keep. Maybe we take out Mothers? I don't know. Hmm. Martha protects Garotik though. Yeah. And also Ooze, which is pretty relevant. Like it's a good against the graveyard and also just a good mid rangey card. So maybe we don't go for the tower deafening silence plan, we just like take out the endurances. Yeah. Right. I don't mind that. So where are we at now? Um probably just want some number of force figure. Yeah. Hmm. Tough one. Green Suns is good. Like the mid rangey plan of like Remanap, Tracker, Grist is really nice. I do play a lot of jewels, so like Knight's still yeah. fine. Yeah, Knight is fine. Um, I guess uh, well, maybe a Thalia. Like I still like Thalia against them, but it's not like crazy crucial against them. So we'll just take out one of those. Yeah, I don't mean like. Also, Thalia I don't makes mind. it a little harder for them to do like dread return. Actually, Thalia is pretty good. Like, makes it harder for them to dread return and. Cabal. Uh, dread, uh, but maybe they don't Cabal. Yeah. It's awkward. Like, we, we have too many cards, but not enough slots. <laughs> and all of those cards are not like great. All of those cards are like four or five out of ten at best. Hmm. Library I like. Library just like draws draws us extra cards, which we might just like need, and their pressure isn't crazy. Uh... It it could be maybe just not having the Force of Vigor and just having the Collector Ufen Liberator. Yeah, Force of Vigor is really good, but maybe maybe take it out. Okay. For game three, we can we can discuss it. <laughs> We're definitely coming back here. But yeah, it's tough because great hand. They typically. Go Ooh. for like a true name slash stoneblade ish plan post board. Let's see how that works out. Oh, they are playing a year. The true name plan is a lot easier to beat when, when you have like Sword of Fire and Ice. Now we would need like, once again, like the Mother plus Night plan, but let's see how good the choke mm. is going to be. Do you want to like super aggressively choke them turn two, or do you want to run out the spirit? I'm not sure. I, I, I'm torn. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I think if they just go fetch pass, I'm pretty happy. I guess that's if the uh, noble resolves. 
Ooh, I mean, that's a feels like a thing. Or something. Ooh. Okay. Swamp, okay. Hit us. I'm not even sure which one they're going to take. Hmm. Yeah, the trick's a little bit easier to play around. Okay. Okay, I guess we just slam the, the choke down. Probably happy to play the canopy this turn. Yeah, I was thinking about it too. Like, the reason to play the canopy would be like if you want to play a wasteland next turn. Um, that would really only matter if they have like scrapland, but okay, let's do it. I guess the upside is we can like just immediately cycle it next turn and then draw two drops. That's the one thing that this deck is somewhat short of on like that's like proactive two drops since I don't have Stone Fortune there. You know, since we have like the spirits. But I guess it was still good enough for them to actually like kid it. Okay. Ah, good stuff. That's a two drop. Mm -hmm. Definitely feel like a prismatic ending coming on the choke. I guess that's fine, then we trade like 3 mana for 3 mana. And we had the 3 mana early on in the game. It's funny that they could just have Ooh, the combo as well. <laughs> if, if, yeah, if, if they just like, go for a prismatic ending and we untap into another choke, that would be insane. Oh, okay. This is a good sign for us. Yeah. <laughs> are there any, actually, yeah, Oboro, I was like thinking, are there any like blue producing lands that don't get choked in a choke? I remember when people in Legacy, like a long time ago, used to play Glacial Fortress and Miracles because of choke. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no oh, shuffle. I guess we just hit them for three. Yeah, and then I guess we play Bird, play Verdant, get Dried Arbor out of the deck. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. This still gives us access to Black Mana in case we draw um, Black, Black Planeswalker. So let's see. Wrist. Uh, I did see Ottawara Sh as well in the uh, graveyard last turn, last game. Okay, okay. Imagine if we had Port here. Skyclave. Mm. Okay, okay. I guess we could still get to attack at least. I did get dried up here because I don't want to draw it, but again, like, Tireless Track is a really nice draw here, and having the fetch line on the board is just really nice to have as well. Okay, well, there's a black man. I guess we just, like, bar you us. I'm not even sure if... if choke on a bear would be would be better i mean you could send it for it i guess but on the other hand it's also like like much easier to deal with it's just like swords and began yeah and i think yeah we would probably like play it as a one-off to send it for for sure <laughs> I, I you know i've always been advocating for ley line of the choke <laughs> ley line of the choke i don't think we have to worry about like a at this point that i don't think the oof is doing too much like there's no vial there's no stone forge around so like even like a yeah. Hull Bridge a double block we don't really care about. I guess they could have like a hard cast Solitude. Fun. Actually, that might actually be it. <laughs> and they're like, actually, what do I Solitude? Like, I guess they could just like take it out straight away with a Solitude. That's fine. Not even block. I guess that would be like a bad trade anyway. Okay. Now he's going to play this. Yeah, I think this is actually much better. Like, it looks like neither of us really got anything. And, and at this point, I would actually keep... Yeah, I think you're doing the same. Like, just keep the lands. Uh, yeah. At this point, neither of us got anything. So if they ever draw into, like, a Ponda, Preordain, Brainstorm, which they seem to have a lot of, since they play Preordain, at least we get to turn it off that way. Oh, what, what's three mana going to be? Is this Wizard Cycling? Uh, Yorian to Oh, Yorian to hand. Ooh, dude, Yorian's going to fuck us up really badly. <laughs> yeah. Where's our pre um, Pyroblast? Mm. Ooh, so That's much for Yorian. One, so, yeah, um, I don't mind attacking just with the dried over here. Okay, yeah, sure. There's a world where we, because uh, if they go like land Yorion, they get to replay everything. So we might as well attack with the spirit then. Oh, you want to attack with the spirit? Doesn't the spirit just like trade for the solitude? Yeah, but it stops them from going. I guess if they go land solid. Yeah, yeah, because 
I think I'm th- I'm thinking too small. I'm thinking that choke only turns off this land, but if they go untap and then tap out for Yurion, then we do have like Caracas for Yurion. But they can't they can't they can't tap out for Yurion, right? Uh well they get to untap these two. Oh you mean if they have a land? Yes, yeah. Okay. Like I is there a world where we want to attack with the spirit to make them block with one of these, potentially? Like they're probably more like, incentivized to block it. They would never do that, right? Mm. So so you're saying you got three three damage, I see. But I think we're just like straight up losing the game if they have another land. Just like there's nothing we can do. Like you basically mm. have to assume they don't have another land. Because if they like there's you're right that we could go for like three damage here. Maybe we should in that case. I guess that mm, yeah it's uh, yeah, yeah it's they, tough. If we, like... we have to assume that they don't have a fifth land, then we probably should for attack for four here. Mm. It's funny, we, yes, we are very like different with regards to Maverick. Like, I always see you t- tapping the creatures, and I always try to, like, keep the creatures un- untapped for as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, see, I like to keep my lands open that I think are... My mana sources that are least likely to be turned off by the mm-hmm. end of my opponent's next turn, which, like, if they have, like, That's some true. sort of, like, sweeper effect, but... <gasps> nothing? Oh, okay. Now we can join to Wasteland or something. Come on, Wasteland, Wasteland, Wasteland. Do it! It's not a Wasteland. But you know what? Actually, let's, let's let's attack with the spirit. I don't hate that. Yeah, because even if they want to like brainstorm or something, it takes them off another blue. Yeah, I think you were right. We should have also attacked with the spirit last turn. But basically, how much mana? We, I guess we missed out on two damage then. Mm. But if they block here, then they wouldn't have blocked in the first place. Okay, okay. So now the Yorian isn't as crazy devastating. Okay, if we get another turn here, uh, like, that would be so big. Why? Well, okay. Blood Strand? Okay. At least they're, they're... Well, no, their mana's not going to be taxed because they can't take out the choke now. Yeah, double check. So how do we how do we pressure them oh. next one? We can bounce the Yorian, which we probably don't want to do, but let's say we did. But our, how, how big is our thing? Yeah, like, we do attack for a 5-5. Yeah, yeah. Haha. Uh-huh. We could even... It's probably not sure worth it. We could even like Caracas Yorian. Not great though. It would be so cool if you got the card back from, from Skycliff version that you put under it. Yeah. <laughs> Salt Supply Share. Oh yeah, it actually is Salt Supply Shares. Ah. Oh. So what if we what if we attack and then if they double block, we blow them out? Yeah. Um so don't play Caracas because that gives that would disincentivize them from double blocking. I guess yeah, it's tough because like if we play the Caracas, we play around Force of Will on the swords, but they potentially didn't keep in. Oh, they're just going to take it. Interesting. Okay, sure. We just now we pass, play right? the Caracas. Oh, do we? I think. I guess we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in case of like their end step. Yeah, the only thing, like, the reason why I'm, like, I'm not sure, like, I, I don't want them to know that we can deal with their, their Yorian, but I guess we could end step Yorian bounce and then salt the plowshares the dude and then attack for five and th- take them down to two. Okay, I don't hate that. But I'm not sure we really want to bounce Yorian unless we, we have a reason to, because right now we're not t- attacking for lethal, right? I guess we could force them to block with the Skycliff apparition if we don't sorts. Mm, they chose to shuffle, which is good. That's definitely good, yeah. It's just so crazy. They have fucking six cards in hand. Like, how are we ever winning this game if they have six cards in hand? We do have lethal as well. <laughs> if we Swords of Skyclave, they go to seven. We get a 3-3. Three, three. We have a 3-3, three, three, which is six. And then seven is the Dried Arbor. Oh, so if you send everybody in. Oh, that's smart. Then they might have to start using removal on... Oh, Jailer. Ooh. Oh, but can we, can we steal back? The I thing? think we can. Well, I guess they we... don't take the bird here. They probably oh, take the token. The I guess we don't get the creature back, but yeah. Fine. Oh, that's actually... And then we, we jump block for like a... Oh, yeah. So let's hope they don't have... Also, if, if you do sorts... Oh, wait, I think this is the point where you have to sort the plowshares before the ponder in case they find force of force. Force, yeah. Because this is the number one card I want to find of the ponder here of uh, sorts the plowshares. So do sorts before the end step, uh, before the mm. monarch trigger resolves. On the Skyclave? 
get the 3-3? Three, three? Probably we have to, yeah. And we don't want to give them the... I guess they already know that we're going to bounce anyway. But okay, yeah. Hopefully no force. Ah. Oh. Nice. Cool. We did it. <laughs> but we uh, did it, I say, as, as we bounce the Orion. And I want to bounce it's a pretty the Orion right now? Probably, yeah. I mean, do, do we even want to? Why, why do we even want to? It does reset the bouncing palace. Yorin, yeah, I was going to say, by bouncing Yorin, we reset the palace trailer. Yeah, my only thought was that if they just block and jump, then they get to start drawing more we cards. Could attack in the, we could attack with, like, two creatures. Uh, that wouldn't work, though. You're right. I kind of like just attacking with the birds here with Exalted. Uh, uh, no. So what, no. If we, what if we attack with this? That makes more sense, right? Yeah. Five puts them to two, and then the birds is lethal, they need to find removal for it. No, that's not what I'm thinking about. Um, uh, the, what I'm thinking about is if we attack and they chump block, then they they can't use Yorian to reset the palace trailer. Mm. Yeah, okay. The downside, of course, is they have seven cards in hand. They might just, like, not go for Yorian next turn. And we, like, if they chump block, we don't get back the monarchy, and then they draw another card eventually, whereas we could draw a card now if we, like, attack the bird. It's It's awkward. So mm. let, let, let's spin this further. So we attack with the bird, we get the monarchy, we draw a card, then stair turn, the Yorian, palace trailer, take out probably the token, they draw a card, then it's our turn again, we bounce the Yorian, we take back the monarchy. Oh, that's just like, that's that's not great. <laughs> I do like attacking with the illusion, because then that, if they don't block, puts them to two, which is lethal with the bird in the air. Yeah. But Solitude is definitely a card as well that could change things up here. Yeah, it's so crazy how they have seven cards and it's just like nothing happens. Maybe they just like give us the extra card. Hmm. No, they don't. Okay. Maybe they have a second palace trailer, who knows? I don't even think they will play Yorian next turn. Like if they play Yorian next turn, that's just like so crazy. That doesn't do anything, especially in the face. That's like they're almost dead unless they have like solitude or like swords or something. I would love to see what their hand is right now. They literally have 10, they have literally like <laughs> a sixth of their entire deck in hand. Oh no, they pay 80 cards, so a little less, but still. <laughs> I can only assume they have the combo in hand as well. Like, they're just not going for it. It's really hard to put together a hand that they could have, especially since we already kind of ruled out for of Oil. They might just go for the combo or something. Another one of these, okay. Just be Skyclave. Maybe they sided out the entire combo. I'm not sure. Or One Piece. No, they didn't. Or we might be just that, you know. <laughs> okay. They even had three creatures. Okay. Yeah, it's a really Why, tough can point. Can we win a game again? <laughs> yeah, we can. We started off really well. We started off really well. We started off so well, the opponent decided to not play us anymore. They were like, you know, I, I don't want the shit. I, I need to leave. GG, see you. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, this has been an amazingly entertaining league, and I really enjoy this. That's the number one reason to play Magic. <laughs> Have you ever played in Europe? No, it's kind of the bucket list. Um, uh, I've done... You've been here, right? Yeah, I did a year in the UK, first year out of school. And then oh, did like good. Which place? trekking around uh, in a school called Woodbridge in Suffolk. It's kind of a, an hour and a half northeast of London. Oh, I see. I see. You had a good time. Like, what, what, what was your impression of, of England? Yeah, I loved was it. Something like I like the some weather. Kind of culture shock? Not too bad. Pretty close to Australia. Um, it's pretty weird finishing like the day at like, you know, when school finishes at like three and it's like already like pitch black by four. <laughs> uh, but then the summers are cool where it's, you know, it's light until 9 or 10 at night mm -hmm. on the play. Nice. You would love it even more in Spain. Like, Spain is in the completely wrong time zone, like, absolutely wrong. So yes. you have sunlight very late into the evening. That looks good, right? You like that? Yeah. One lander, but we have double bird. Double mana accelerator. Yeah. This, this is the kind of hand where, like, in the old Maverick lists, we had one, uh, one of Clurion Ranger. That was, like, the big discussion. Do we play one of Script Ranger, one of Clurion Ranger, or do we play two Script Rangers? Uh, this is the kind of hand that would greatly benefit from a, from a Script Ranger. Uh, from a Clurion Ranger. Clurion Ranger. 100%. I don't mm. know. We could just play either. I... Yeah, I'm always, I'm always torn. 
without knowing what the matchup is. So whom are we playing against? I have no idea. Chicking? What what kind of name is? That? Oh, Chicking. Okay, whatever. I think against like Reanimator or Pox or something, it's best just to probably play Windswept and then play Thalia because that plays around like Dark Ritual into Opposition Agent. And, and Birds. Oh, dude, so smart. I like it. But that card is okay. And now we're gonna have so much mana. Yeah, now we also I, have I really like the spot. Like they didn't like something like Entomb and Respawn, so that's also not it. So this could yeah. be the dinosaur deck. Have you have you seen the one with like rot rotting Rachasaur? Yes. Oh, Badlands. Okay. Is gonna be yeah, a Reanimator. Yeah. I had a pedal and pass. Huh. So actually, uh, no, our our Thalia is working against us. We could get Ooze, but unless we draw, if we draw land, <gasps> we have Ooze active. Oh. Uh, did draw land. Sweet. Yeah, I think Ooze active. And we have endurance. Yeah, my other thought was collect Oof, but I think Ooze active is just so much better. Yeah, definitely. I guess I might as well attack. Because if we if we rely on collect Oof and they have like let's say grief into a combo, then we're like Oof. Oof. Especially in the first game, having Ooze on board is like so hard for them to beat. Like one of the ways they can do it is like Exhum plus second Entomb or something. But yeah, Dali attacks that very well, which is nice. Yeah, it's super hard for them to have enough mana for that. It would be like, I don't know, ritual, 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 and then try. I don't know. Okay, bring it on, opponents. This is, we this is the Maverick that I can get behind. I was going to say, this is good, clean Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they start hardcasting uh, Crystal Brand at some point. Please don't show and tell or something. <laughs> What's this? Might actually be show and tell. Like, wh what, what would you do for three mana here? Maybe they, they cast. Huh. Ooh, this is is this like okay. mid range reanimator? I've never seen that. Either is it even reanimator? It probably is, or is it some kind of weird painter? I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. So I guess at this point out. we just like start focusing on trying to kill them. <laughs> hmm. uh, what's good here? So I'm thinking like I, I want to start wastelanding them just to make life hell for them. I also want to take out that stupid creature. I want to take out the... Uh, actually, maybe we take out Fable. I'm not sure. What's, yeah, what's the smartest thing we can get here that does something? Uh, Atlan Liberator trades with the Fable. Yeah, but then we don't have mana for Ooze anymore. No. That's also a world where we just like set up for something to, to have something next turn. So mm. I, for as much as I want to get Knight, we can't like do that that's just like too crazy i think like a sweet start is to just attack with, with like thalia yes i guess we can also attack with could... ooze because it's a three three and then thalia with first strike is just good against the goblin but then they block ooze and it dies because it's a two two right uh exalted yeah, yeah but if you attack with both we don't get exalted no so oh, you, I thought you wanted to attack with both. <laughs> no, 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 just the, uh, just the ooze. That's okay. Oh, okay, okay. Let, let's get the ooze in there. That's actually better, yeah, than you have the uh, strike blocker. So yeah, what, what I was thinking is maybe just excavator and replay the land. So we are going to have like a ton of mana available for every, all the crazy stuff we want to do. And maybe, like, yeah, exactly. Not tap. Um, Karaka is smart. Nice. We can also just hard cast the endurance if we really need to. Yeah. Curious to find out what this actually is. I, I, I guess it's just like Black Red Reanimator and they, they splash Fable. Because it's a yeah. good card. And I haven't come across stuff. anything like it. I, I think it's kind of funny if they get Archon of Cruelty and then they copy Archon oh of Cruelty. Gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Echo of Eons, what the fuck? Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not Kansas anymore. Actually, if they cast anyway, LED, could... we can endurance them, thankfully. Yeah, if they wanna get anything, but they already know that. So because we have Ooze on board. Okay, I think we should remove the Echo of Eons during the end of combat step. Okay.
but I guess we can also do it in, in damage. It's interesting, like how people use different. Which, oh, you you have the the lock set. Oh, that's why you can't click the the bar, right? Oh, the lock set. Yeah, it looks like you have the lock. Like I saw you you added. I've never seen somebody add a. Um, oh, oh, like oh, do oh, this? No, 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 no. Um, just click click on end end combat, on that that little thing uh, end of combat right next to it. Just like click on the top thing. No, left click. Oh, you you can click on that. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. locked. But you have to you have to lock sets. That's, <gasps> that's what I meant. Oh, you it's can so just click. Like, how people use magic online. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> a whole new um, world. My question is: you, just, you move it with ooze, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And then we still have one up in case they try to go for it again with some crazy hand. Yeah, oh my exactly. Gosh. The <laughs> things you learn about MTGO. Yeah. The next step is to remove the summoning sick animation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really sad? We yeah, haven't we've it? played a lot of we've played a lot of turns tonight and we haven't seen Avon Mind Sensor. Oh we we barely ever had it in <gasps> hand, I believe. Demi got it. Oh revenge. fuck it, this is hilarious. I mean, oh that's my god. It's just like wait, post some bit nice, I like it. Cool. Yeah. Do it. That's okay. <laughs> we we just like straight up race that shit. Hey, let's just like remove the grave here as long as we can. Hmm. Okay, I think. Do, do we play? Yeah, is there any way for us to get wastelands? Uh, it would be so sweet, but no. I guess there's not. And green suns for grist. Take this out, eat it, attack with everything. And then they they cast a second one. That that's usually the idea, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, sounds. Like right now, I don't really care about the demigod. It's just like five damage, and we raise it. I, I, I'm just like thinking: is there anything that we can do that's that's better value for our money? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm thinking like maybe mm. knight. We can also like eventually just like randomly jump block. Like I'm I'm a little more scared of of the the token they get of the uh, the fable, or rather the fable turning into that that thing. Okay. We can still. Uh, you know what we could do? We could play liberator, but then it probably won't flip right because they will play a spell. That would be so sweet. But right now, mm. like all I care about is the beatdown. I think we just like straight up get them with a the beatdown. So ideally, we just like flash an endurance next turn. But what if we play liberator and pass? Is that crazy? Yeah. We Not could also that. get knight. Yeah, we could also get like knight. And I mean, we can't do it now. Actually, technically, we still can. But I guess flashing an endurance is almost as good. Yeah, okay, let's just pass. Yeah, because I guess that also means we just don't die to some sort of weird graveyard turn from them. So we tapped off the ooze and the endurance. Yeah, I, no, what I was thinking is knight instead of liberator, because that, then we can double wasteland them next turn. Maybe even triple if we draw um, strip ranger. I'm not even sure if they attack with Demigod here. Like, they are so losing the race. This card's very cool. I remember seeing it in modern for a little bit. <laughs> it used to be a thing where people would be... You remember that? When people had, like, semi... Like, when people played Demigod, and you know about the trick that people played, that people pulled, which was, like, super... There was a lot of discussion about whether it's unethical or not. <laughs> okay. So let's say... You, you, okay, so the way it works is you play Demigod. Your yeah. opponent plays Counterspell. And then you're like, uh, okay, Counterspell resolves. Demigod goes to the graveyard. And then you're like, okay, Demigod trigger resolves. And the opponent's like, yep. what? Like, yeah, uh, you didn't <laughs> wait for the Demigod trigger to resolve. It comes back. And that was like a big thing. And people were all about of whether that's unethical or not. Okay, I can barely see the screen anymore. It's getting like super pixelated. But I think this is the second Demigod, right? Yes, correct. Okay. That must be a Discord thing. I'm not sure if I can stop that from happening. Well, it's usually like either my downstream is too bad or your upstream is, is not working, but it's it's back again. It works now. I guess we just take uh, that, right? Yeah, there's no great block. Wouldn't mind just like flashing back in like the endurance and maybe even just like get. Yeah, know, it's still in the deck. I'm definitely thinking about uh, using the Outland Liberator right now. Use our two mana 
and then eat it with ooze. Oh, that's that's cool as well. On the other hand, like we'll probably have enough mana next turn anyway. So another thing we could do is like get Tyler's Tracker next turn, in which case the Wasteland at uh, a Fetchland turns into a card that we can draw. Mm. I like but I guess either way we use the oh, I was gonna say either way we use the Outline Liberator at end of turn. Uh, okay, yeah, to get rid of the reflections. Because there's no real point of this. Uh... And the reflection is like the scariest card. Even though they have mm. like two, four, five flyers, we can eventually draw into something, hopefully. Three, four. So, what are we getting here? Uh, hmm. Probably Tyler's Tracker, right? I'm just like thinking is there a way that we race them with the. Uh, with the knight. Like knight five, is gonna be five uh, five. five. No. We might have a, an okay attack this turn if we send everything in. I don't I'm not sure. Uh, I can get them to two. Okay, and then we play knight on top. Um uh, two. So we uh use a mana. So basically so we, 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 so you you would send everything in except for like the mana birds, I guess. Yeah, uh, but I would. And then we we also kill the, the reflection, so they they block the biggest guy, which would be um, uh, endurance. So they take one, two, three, four. Uh, grow ooze, maybe. Not. Okay, they can also like block ooze, I guess. So they oh, actually, one, two, three, three four, five, six. Huh? Uh, yeah. Sorry. So uh, outland deals with the reflections, goes to the bin. That's one mana. And then we can Green Suns for Grist, which uh, puts another creature in the bin and gets rid of the Reflections. So that's two creatures in the bin, which makes Squeeze a 4-4. Four, four. that's so smart. I totally forgot about Grist. Uh, sorry, yeah, continue. So then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11 but with Endurance. But, but shouldn't we do it a different way? Shouldn't we, like, kill the... the in... I, I would do it differently. I would kill the, the Demigod and the Reflection and attack. You yes, can even first yeah. attack with the Liberator to, because you said the Grist kills the Reflection. Or did, did, did you also mean Grist kills um, the Demigod? Yeah, because uh, pre-combat, no Demigod like, I don't care about killing them right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't care about killing them right now. We probably can't do that. That doesn't matter. But we are also not winning. We are not like losing on the swing back. So I want to kill them next turn. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we can deal... Uh, lethal this turn. Yeah, yeah we can. There's like absolutely no way we can do that. <gasps> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, we got it. We got it. We got it this turn. We got it this turn. Okay, cool. Okay, watch. Okay, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> uh, do we need to do that? I thought we could just like attack with it first and see whether they block. Because now we get to go. Sons. Three. So I see us dealing 11, which is still like great, right? Uh, I think because we're a mana short. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically the line I wanted to go for. But I mean, you're doing it anyway. Because <laughs> yeah, I didn't. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12. But we only have two lands to eat with. Yeah, make, make sure to eat the, the demigod for sure. Yes. Actually, we don't even need to eat, to eat the second one. Just like, just in case they do some graveyard related shit. Yeah, and just nice. like keep them on two. Reflection is not legendary. You can actually uh, do some really damn. crazy stuff with two reflections. Like Callum did that at the last tournament, where he had two reflections and like ten mana end of turn. So he made end step ten copies, untap, but swung for lethal. Ah, oh, that's very cool. It would have actually yeah. worked if we did what we did. The last end of their turn, where we actually sacked the uh, Outland Liberator yeah. and ate it. Tough. I mean, it's fine. I think we're like in an almost unlosable spot in the first game, at least. The only thing I would have probably done differently is like I wouldn't have grown ooze, so we could have like two mana available. Ah, so you would allow the Fable to block something? No, I would just like not grow ooze. I would just like attack ooze with a two-two, so we would have two mana available. 
we spent one mana on growing Ooze last turn, which made the difference of putting them to two instead of three, and I think having one more mana available would be better. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. What's the play? That last, uh, their last end step. <laughs> yeah, their last end step is basically between like fetching dried arbor, right? Or, or using, um, the. Uh... What's it called? Outland Liberator and eating it right away. I think you even proposed that, right? But then we, we just like skipped through it. Anyway, but yeah, that that's a weird deck. That's a very weird deck. Yeah. Uh, what do we want here? I could. I guess another endurance. I don't know, man. I guess some chokes. They they like if they play all these these weird cards, um, Fable and, and that deck. Like they might be more mid rangey, which makes choke better. But I'm not super high on choke. Um, maybe a maze. Honestly, like I, I would have thought, like maze at yeah. some points would have been like sweet. I guess you know they probably play buried alive. That makes sense, right? Buried alive for a bunch of of those demigods and then cast demigods. That yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. Mm. Um, I guess tireless track is too slow. We probably don't really need it. Collector, I like to keep because it also blocks the tokens, um, the the treasure tokens of the. Fable. Yeah. Um yeah. maybe library is a little slow, I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. Uh excavator is the... also like not great. Mm. Like excavator I could see cutting and then we would bring in like a choke for it or a library or I'm not even like thus far we haven't really seen anything that would make Deafening Silence good. They seem less explosive and more like just like Yeah, like we haven't seen like a ritual. Mm. I would guess there's rituals on there, but I, I could be wrong. Like, if they don't have rituals on there, what are they even going to do in the first turn? <laughs> so that's like yeah, that's... Uh, like, Force Remember of Digging's... Saying, opponents also playing Intuition and Buried Alive. Yeah, maybe hmm. Force of Vigor? Uh, it's, it's a bad trade, though, right? Mm. It's a really bad trade. That, that's the one, like, you... You'd spend two cards on killing one card and they still get to keep their token or is mm. the token also an enchantment no but even then it's a bad trade I, I don't know i mean i would bring in like a choke maybe even two and take out uh, possibly the we even have slides. havens uh, if they have buried alive definitely yeah. not like if yeah. they have buried alive and entomb then i definitely want those i could see taking out what did i mention um I don't know if taking out no spirit definitely not mothers yeah mother i don't hate oh excavator yeah excavator is one i want to take out for sure that's just like nice. not working i have just one mom yeah let's just take out one mom <laughs> you know that sorry about that that uh norwegian guy runes and people made make him sign mother of runes <laughs> <laughs> The old mm. one lander. But the opponent keeps seven? Correct. Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, it's not exactly great. I, I would feel better if we had like endurance in hand. I think we send it back, right? Like I don't yeah. fault people for keeping this on the draw. On the play, I send it back immediately on the draw. I'm at least considering it because it's like okay. It's actually pretty okay on the draw, but yeah, let's let's send it back. I do like having the mana to cast my hands and here we go. I don't mind dropping yeah. a knight here, keeping the three lands. I would send back a land, honestly. Yeah, I guess because we, we have draw... green suns for dried arbor. Yeah, we, we draw three cards before we actually like would get screwed if we don't draw a land. So I, that's a bet I'm willing to make. Hmm. And okay. even if we don't, then we draw like other sp stuff that we might be able to cast, like endurance or one mana spells, two mana spells. That's. I want, I, want, I want to, like, gamble to get some payoff. So the dream scenario here is they just play another fetch land and pass. But that's probably not happening. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, they seem like a fast combo deck. For, for them to not have anything here seems fishy. Oh, is this end of turn brainstorm? That's so awkward. Hmm. Okay. But that should make their second turn pretty important. If you do that here, then your second turn better be really good. City of six? I think it's better if you have yeah. four, yeah. Otherwise, we give away that we don't have endurance. Cool. Shieldred. Oh, Shieldred. Yeah, sure. We can beat that. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, luckily we have a like knight or Rackus. Or just yeah. swords. I think it's still like better to just like get knight. I guess the one way we get punished is if they. Yeah, actually, that's a little bit scary. If they do have Echo of Eons, right? They showed us Echo of Eons in the first uh, game. Yes. Like, you get massively screwed if they have Echo of Eons here. Yeah, okay. Like, we lose I... how much? Like, 14 life? Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind swords, Queen no, Sons. No, don't, don't, don't. No? I mean, we you don't need two swords right now. You might incentivize them to use Echo of Eons with something like LED or so, right? Mm. They might invest resources. I mean, the, the, the only thing is they gain two life because we don't do it right away. And I think that's okay. Technically, we could even like, like I'm, I'm like the the I'm, the decision to me right now is do we do we send it for another mana dude, uh, or do we not? And like the upside is, I guess we keep Aven Mind Sense alive, but it, that doesn't really do much here. Uh, yeah. But we also get to play around days if they actually have it. Um, I'm actually not sure. So I don't know. Like we yeah. definitely I think keep up swords. It's really tough because like and... the upside of Knight is that it finds Caracas, which deals with Shieldred and saves the swords for a non-legendary creature, but it does open that's this up true, to the Knight can also find Echo. Maze. That's true, but yeah, Maze, that's true. Knight can also find Maze. Like, I, I, I don't think we could play Knight here, um, just because Echo of Eons is so, so devastating. Like, mm. they, they almost straight up kill us. Like, they tell you, we, how much damage do we take? Actually, we die. Yeah, because we, we die, die. Up, so... Oh, we can, I guess, yeah. yeah. Yep. I think we just uh, pass. Or we accelerate. Like, if you want to accelerate on top, I think that also makes sense. Maybe that's actually better. Not sure if they're Would you then, to play around days, we then swords and then green suns? The thing is, I don't want to swords um, mm. here because I want to incentivize them to use something like LED, Echo of yep. Eons, and, and then, like, that's just, like, really good. And I don't mind giving them to, the two life that they would gain. <laughs> it's it's always funny get... like I guess we can't attack anyway so like yeah I guess we get somewhat punished if they have like um, Birds of Paradise but I wouldn't really call that a punish uh, if they have Birds of Paradise if they have Brainstorm uh, because then we lose 6 life but I wouldn't even call that all that much of a punish like we, we have some spare life this is inherently a combo matchup oh uh, I guess that's fine right <laughs> yeah it's interesting if they attack you, do we attack. just... Yeah, yeah, we, we take it out. Is that their plan to help stop us I from having guess a... Yes, they just... Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's kind of crazy shit here. Yeah, that looks good. I think, and, yeah, uh, Knight noble. into Noble and potentially get Waste Sun online next. Yeah, this, this is their turn where they need to make something happen. Like, they have free reign to do anything they want. Like, if they're buried alive and I don't know what... You could even like build this is probably like better built as a Phoenix shell, I would guess. Shredder. And okay. this like is just like two middle of the road. Oh this my gosh. Not very impressive. Oh my gosh. Lake of the oh, here? there's demigods. What's Bring this? it on. This must be demigod. <laughs> demigod. Well, they get to connive as well. If they all? discarded a second demigod, that would be hilarious. Watch them. Watch them discard a second demigod. I wanna see it. Do it. Ah. Oh. I guess if they had one, they would have immediately discarded it. Or maybe that it's slow roll. One doesn't like their mana all that much, I guess. Dude, in strip range, it would be an insane draw here. Strip range allows us to get maze and wasteland. Oof. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying oh, to remember, table. Demigod doesn't have haste, right? So we might just like, play the second night. Flying and haste. Oh, flying haste, it's beneath that, okay. I was wondering why it didn't show up, but yeah, it has a triggered ability, so it's printed on top of the keywords. 
Uh, that's actually pretty funny because with connive you have to for a card. <laughs> um, I guess we we definitely play the knight, right? And then it's. Do they want a wasteland so badly? Actually, they have to sacrifice a swamp, right? Can you go check? They can't sacrifice any land. They have to sacrifice a swamp. Okay. Yes. Maybe we just play the knight and get the maze, play it super safe. Like, my, my greed immediately wants to wasteland them, play a knight, and also play our spirit. But I think it's probably better to play it safe since we are so far ahead. Yeah, so we can play knight and spirit here. And then we can hold up yeah. maze. Sounds good. I guess there's like a... Oh, I, word. I should I mean, have played okay. the spirit first because then they have to connive. Oh no, but it's one kind oh, of turn. Then, so they... then we fuck them up pretty badly, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it would be the first so card they draw this turn, so they can actually draw and then discard. That's true, that's but. true. <laughs> so if you can actually play stuff on their turn, like if you can play two spells, yeah. I I'm wondering whether we should like get Mace right away, just in case they have like, I don't know, like Dark Ritual into a position agent. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Chat is asking. <laughs> what is going on there, Steam Deem Oh, okay. no. Okay. We got rid of our. And okay, we still have this mana. Yeah, and we can like jump log at least once. But Magus is really good here. We might actually need to go to a third game now. Yes, yeah, so what do we have? We can attack for 10 and hold up. So we have access to one so white, which gives us. Aven. Uh huh. Mm, and we can't use the knights. Like, yeah, I guess we just like attack, right? Is there anything else we can do? Uh, Except for Dryad Arbor. Actually, does Dryad Arbor attack as well? Probably not. I guess we have to hold like two uh, creatures just in case yeah, they also yeah, attack yeah, we, with the Magus. We just like, get, we, we just like attack with our creatures so that can deal damage. Yeah, then so you have to tap the noble for Aven yeah, to keep back the, the noble doesn't attack. Four. Yes. Ah, oh, but the uh, the noble has to block. Oh, sorry, has to produce white for Aven. Yeah, yeah, that's how we cast Aven Mind Sensor. Yeah. So we jump block twice, and then we hope to draw something relevant. I guess that was a good reason to uh to wasteland as well as. Yeah. Three for <laughs> just like this is, I, I want to waste it as hard and as much as I can. It's so, such a. I was born with the desire to wasteland. They don't attack with the Magus. Interesting. I guess they are scared. Maybe they know about the mind sensor from watching the stream. No, I don't think so. <laughs> they, I mean, even if they were watching the stream, they should attack with the Magus. So I don't think they are. <laughs> or maybe they shouldn't. Anyway, what is this going to be? They are playing something. Oh, some kind of weird counter spell. Yeah, maybe Absolutely. they have some kind of crazy weird counter spell. Oh, they're going to intuition in intuition. response. What do you get in response with intuition? I'll be days. Surely they don't play like X amount of packed negations. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're casting intuition response because intuition gets turned off by mind sensor. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we need to draw something. We need to draw something. So how far, how much damage are we actually cracking back? 4, 8, 11. But actually, yeah, you know what? I mean, the reason they're not attacking with Magos is they would be dead on the swing back. <laughs> actually, no, because we have to blo jump block with the Dryad Arbor, but Dryad Arbor grows to two knights. That's very true, yeah. Dryad Arbor dying actually does deal two more damage, so th that's the reason yeah. why they... And then, you know what? Then they have to jump block with the Magos, which frees Maze, which allows yeah. us to at least deal with Demigod, but we don't die to the Ledger Shredder unless they play a second spell. So what do you actually give them? What, what, did you see what we gave them? I didn't see it. Oh, it was all Ledger Shredders. Okay. They so Ledger we, Shredder. we need to make sure to not cast a second spell here. And hopefully they don't cast two spells next turn. Oh, is that... That's pretty big, right? That's a free block. Yes. But let's not... Okay. 
So four, eight, eleven, twelve. That's just not good enough. Oh. Is four, is there eight. a world where we get to attack with five, nine? Uh, sorry, that's, that's <laughs> uh, just not good enough. Twelve, but before if they don't block, we can put in Scrib Ranger, sack. The dried no, arbor? We, there's, no, that's dry. There's Megas on play. We can't stack dried arbor. But it's, oh, it's no longer a forest. Okay, sorry. I thought it was still a forest creature. Uh, okay. So let's say we attack with like the same attack as last turn. They take it, and then we. I think we can win. We. I'm pretty sure we can. Make sure they don't have a second spell. I guess so we, we can we just need... cast the script engine now. We probably should, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't have attacked with one of our creatures. Maybe we shouldn't have attacked with a spirit. Because it didn't really make any that much of a difference. Mm. Now if they get to remove any of our blockers, we die. Whereas if we had kept the spirit back, we would have still Lift unless they remove like one of the flying blockers. Yeah, okay. Unless they got something, I think we should have this. Look here. No, no, no. Yeah, on the big one, yeah. yeah. And this on the small one. <laughs> so yeah, they, I'd they, love they could, actually they bolt. could you know they could like brainstorm and daze there on brainstorm and then they win. Yes, but we know one card in hand is ledger shredder. That's true. That's true. So they could Leisure Shredder, but then nothing else because they're an attack. They couldn't even like Leisure Shredder. So. I'm trying to like rule out everything since they didn't cast main phase Leisure Shredder. That rules out so many things. Mm. I think that man is really hurting as well. To, I'm trying to put together a, a hand that they could have that wins. I'm not seeing one right now, but I'm probably missing a ton of stuff because that's just like <laughs> this is such a weird deck. Oh, are we running on one life? Is there? Nice. Okay, we got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, classic. Dude. Oh, man. Oh, I love Maverick. So let's recap. What what did we beat? We managed to beat this and F's. And we lost to Cephalid Breakfast, Blue Red Diver, and I don't remember the middle one. Uh, Blue Red Diver, Cephalid Breakfast, and uh, was there like a Bant kind of deck? Oh, well, so. We timed out against something. That was elves. Time oh, no, death and taxes. Death and taxes. Okay, yeah. Okay. Death and taxes. That, that, yep. that happens. <laughs> yeah. I think... Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think tonight made me kind of respect scavenging is a bit more now. I think a lot of people have kind of just gone for endurance, but Ooze is just like a nice grindy card is, is really nice to have. It's yeah, kind of like Ooze, a sniper. It's kind of cool. Like... The only card that I'm feeling like so and so on is like right now Spirit of the Labyrinth. That could be something else. Like we we were somewhat lacking defense or or rather like interaction on the opponent's turn mm. uh, for some stuff. But I mean elves, I'm just like okay, we lose that anyway. Um, even though we won it this time, but I mean yeah, it's it's not a matchup I care about. Sephiroth Breakfast made me think like technically, uh, Maverick should have a lot of ways to attack with Sephiroth Breakfast or like creature. Not elves, but other kind of creature combo decks. But we don't really have like good hate bears against that kind of shit, except for ooze. <laughs> we keep going back to ooze is like actually like pretty good. Mm. Maze. Oh yeah, this is actually the card that, that I was the happiest about. Uh, I I wasn't sure how good maze was gonna be, but actually I enjoyed maze quite a lot in this league. Yeah, same. I think it would be very cool to see at the start how we're talking about a Stoneforge Mystic build um, as like another way to not only have card advantage but find ways to deal with opposing threats through cards like um sort of fire and ice or potentially jit or just having a really fast clock like uh cauldra complete which is obviously quite nice against elves it's just making them combo off before you can deal that damage yeah so i feel like i i, I would want like one or two more like creature removal spells or or removal spells doesn't even need to be creature spells but anything mm. that removes stuff on the opponent's side of the board maybe like cutting even a force of vigor for it uh, for as much as I like it, but we, we are kind of overloaded against these 8-cast style decks with like Deafening Silence and Farce of Figure, so I could see like dropping 
either a force of vigor or a deafening silence to or maybe even one of each to add two more cards that ideally at instant speed interact with the opponent's board because i felt like ah I don't know, a couple of times when we passed the turn, I felt like we were somewhat naked with regards to interaction, which is like just the Maverick way, of course. But Yeah, that's, like that's... a like part to exile. Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is tough because it goes against that whole like uh, mana denial plan. Yeah, like Prismatic Ending is another one, of course, that isn't instant speed, but on the other hand, like maybe that incentivizes you to use it on the main phase and then you're going to have swords available on their, on their turn. So I could see something like maybe two um, uh, prismatic ending, but prismatic ending isn't a good sideboard card. Prismatic ending is more like a main deck card. Mm. Uh, that's something I could see, or maybe even like the very old like Council's Judgment to get rid of progenitors. Um, but yeah, this is this is what I what I'm feeling like right now. Um, lots of thoughts about that, especially with the spirits. I'm still not super sure about the spirits. I I don't hate them. Uh, but I could certainly see them becoming something else. Nice. Uh, Jules, it was a pleasure to have you on the stream. Definitely a uh, MTG Twitch bucket list uh, <laughs> event Anytime, for sure. Uh, but I believe you actually played Maverick recently, which I assume will be coming out on your own channels, if not already oh, did out. <laughs> did I? I? I don't remember streaming it. Ah, did you record with it? No. <laughs> ah, interesting. Maybe I just came across an older version of yours. Because usually I uh, I fall asleep to online leagues. I just find it really nice uh -huh. to like think about lines and like I uh, I actually find it really uh nice instead of like counting sheep to visualize a, a game state from someone who's streaming and talking about what's on the field and like trying to remember mm -hmm. like what they've like seen from like a reveal like what's in what's in play because it just puts you to sleep really fast. But, <laughs> that's good that's good yeah but i haven't um, played it recently at least not on stream or, or recorded but yeah dude my pleasure i think for you it's like really early in the morning right i'm i'm gonna start thinking about well it's, it's still way too early for dinner <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thanks for bringing yeah. me on guys if you want to find my stuff you can find me on twitter.com slash it's julian 23 you can find me streaming on twitch.tv slash it's julian and you can listen to the podcast that callum kai and matt and i run that's called Everyday Eternal. You can find us on at EternalMTG on Twitter and Instagram. Nice. You oh, yeah, have that have down pad as well. I hate it. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> speaking of, is there a new site coming out? Yeah, there, there has been literally a... I've been working on the Everyday Eternal website for literally two years by now. I, I already like I, I paid for the resubscription for a couple of things twice. And just last night I was sitting on it and I was like, you know, you should just like release this. It's like 99% complete and fuck that last percent, right? Eat the last, eat the 1%, just release the website. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, a huge thank you for coming on. Uh, it is, yeah, a pleasure to have you. Uh, I really enjoyed the league. I don't think that the score represents just how enjoyable it was. And just, yeah, nice to like talk through lines. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Awesome, a big dudes. thank you. Everybody, a big thank you, you to all. Good night, man. In bye chat. Bye. Thank you again. And uh, I'll send you guys off to Doomwake's channel. Cheers. See you guys next time.